All right, everybody. Welcome to Hardly Heroes. And Hardly Heroes we are. You We're dirty thieves. So, when the renovation's going on, Neil? It's going to take months, but yeah. There's dwarves everywhere. Are we able to live in the upstairs of the house? Uh, are they like underground? You want to live in a fucking renovation hell zone. What's They're working 24 hours, Nick. There's dwarves in and out constantly. But can't they dig sort of separate access so we can keep them out of the house? No, they they're no. coming in and out of your your main access area, which has to be completely uh, torn out, and they're gonna have to re renovate your living room and your dining room and your bar and everything. And there okay. are just uh, what do you call it? Wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow of rock that's being rolled out of here on a constant man. basis. I'd like to cut to a scene. I'd like to cut to a scene. Okay, we're in the ground floor of the apartment. We're talking amongst ourselves. Oh, the work's starting today. It's very exciting. I'm making myself a cup of coffee. I've got a piece of toast, right? I'm playing I'm with a potato. I've mm-hmm. just sat down on the chair. I'm putting my feet up on the table. I go to drink the first sip of my coffee, and then, boom, the door opens, and in walks a dwarf with a wheelbarrow. <laughs> and we all just quietly watch him as he goes past. I slowly sip my coffee. And then after him, another dwarf, this guy, he's got bags of cement, and he's walking in. Thirdly, after that, another dwarf, this guy's just got a scroll. And there's How many in total there? <laughs> six dwarfs walk past us underneath the thing, and I just think we haven't thought this through. <laughs> um, maybe we need to find somewhere else to be. Did you clear this with our landlord, Eraser? L- Eraser looks at you and smiles and goes, "Landlord, <laughs> we send some money off every month. Well, I should say I take care of it <clears throat> as first among equals." And uh, he doesn't come by. But that's a good point. You know, Who is he? Some inner city twat. Fuck him. Let's stop paying. Let's stop paying. <laughs> we could. What's he going to do? Oh, come out here with some armed guards and evict us. Oh, oh well, let's just keep paying then. I don't want to get evicted. <laughs> well, hang on. It depends how rich this guy is. I mean, is he really going to march down here with like four guys and chainmail and swords? Have you ever rented before? Do you, do you have, of course. We could scare him off. My old landlord just used to bang mom for the rent. <sighs> we could scare him off, but then he's going to come back. You know, it's you, you don't want it. We could get into a prolonged conflict with the inner city nobles over this house, but that seems like a pain in the ass. How well, much I, do we pay him? Yeah. How much? Uh, 50 gold a month. Covered in Is our expenses, right? then. That's covered mm. in our expenses, for sure. No, oh, it, uh, 25 gold a month is what you're paying. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So, yeah, it's fine. You know, we're buying all of this drink. And as much as I love the company of you, my brothers, uh, we could do with some gals around here. You know, maybe some different faces. What if, and here's a long-term plan. Helmet okay. bobs maybe, head up and down. Maybe if this guy comes with his four men right now, we wouldn't be able to stop them. But we start having some parties. We need someone to drink all this beer anyway. You know, we get some food in. We maybe buy another house on this block for us to have our parties in. And uh, the neighborhood's going to love us. Then when Mr. Fancy Pants comes with his, uh, his four guards, it won't just be us. Mm. The whole town will be saying, you know, get the fuck out of our street. These guys are the best. Leave them alone. Yeah, but... But we don't really want to get in conflict with this guy if we can just not have that for 25 gold a month. We could, uh, yeah, but he could evict us. Like, we should, if this is worth 25 gold a month, then Quick Math says it can't be worth more than a few thousand total, maybe. Maybe we can make him an offer to buy it. Yeah, if we make it hard for him to start collecting the rent, he might uh, be willing to just take off. Let us take it off his hands. Well, how about that, Eraser? How about we how about we buy it from him? Uh, probably charge us about ten thousand gold for that. Ten thousand gold? Yeah, probably. These landlords, leeches. I I mean, technically, according to the laws, none of us are. <clears throat> I don't think any of us are even allowed to own land. I don't know. What what is the new queen, empress, whatever her oh, face fuck says about these? Percival boy. could. That's Everyone true. turns to look at Percival. 
He gives like a dirty look to everyone else and grumbles <laughs> under his breath. Takes his uh, nice, because now you guys are rich, right? So you're not oh, just yeah. having like whatever beverages. Now you've got like the nice coffee, right? The nice coffee that comes from the southern part of Drekus. Not this like crap that's grown out here the that's imported. like barely even caffeinated, mm. right? So nice. he takes a sip of his like more fancy coffee that's almost that's like you know three silver a cup to drink <laughs> now things are starting to make sense you are recording right mm. i just want to make sure yes i am recording thanks Perfect. for the double check okay. though mm. yeah i'll have to pay a visit back home to get my scrolls in order mm. All right, then, because we don't want to get evicted out of here after we make a lair. I say, looking at the dwarves who are working, I assume. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't they don't ask for papers. They just they just went in and started going. They didn't ask for permits. They didn't ask for papers. <laughs> they didn't ask for uh, existing floor plans They If they run into a problem, they're just going to solve that problem. That. One way or the other, and if it creates conflict, that lands on your head. Um, but, right. you know, you hired the sorts of people who Get the job done without asking questions. But they questions. are here for six months protecting us. Yeah. So if you want to make um, problems with the landlord, I think this is the time. Now's the time. Yeah. Because 10,000 gold, 10, gold is a lot. How about we yeah. give him a bit of a problem and then uh, we stop paying and tell him we, we want to buy it or, or else. And then he'll eventually just get tired and sell it to us. Hmm. We could. We could. Thing it's is, this is a right now. city's gonna be coming back, right? You know, wars are over. Arcadia's united. New empress is in town. A couple of years, this place is gonna be worth a fortune. May maybe a decade, this place is gonna be worth a fortune. If there's one thing I know about the upper class, it's that they like to hold on to land and pass it down through the generations, right? They, they don't make new land anymore, except except right. for ethos. So, um, you know, I imagine it's good to buy now. 400 times your monthly cost is probably about what you charge. The thing all is, right. we're not costing this guy anything. This 25 gold a month he's getting off us, that's all profit for him. We need to start costing him. If he's our landlord, then how come the hinges on that door don't work properly? You know, how come the gate gets stuck every time when I try and leave? I point you know, at the we need to... room. I mean, we yeah. cost It was raining the other day. We had to put a book out here to catch the rain dripping through the roof, you know. 25 gold a month. This guy should be sending someone down here to get that fixed up. I don't disagree with you, but things are what they are. The world's unfair. And landed elite, well, they're always asking for every little penny and never giving them out. Say, Percival, do you have like a, a seal or something? Something to prove your uh, birth? He nods. I, like, I'd have to head back home to get my scrolls in order, I said. Where are you from again? Up north. Yeah. Oh, okay. We could send this guy a letter, you know, you know, uh, written from your father or something saying our son's living here and the conditions aren't good and it needs to be amended. Or else I'll, you know, offer an offer to buy it at a reduced price, of course, given the state of the property. I really don't want to get my family involved. Fuck them. They're cunts. They're cunts through and through. You ever had a shitty family? I know your mom's a whore and all, but like, that's better than what I had to deal with. Sorry, Luther. Sorry, sorry, Pigeon. But, you know. No, she was a whore. That's fine. Um, That's her I job, would much yeah. rather just go home, get I my seal, get my birth certificates, get my, my scrolls of heritage, get all the, the paperwork in order, leave well, with it. Now that we got a real lair, now that there's a safe place to store that, okay. I got one thing to say to that, though, Percival. Like you said, these guys truly are cunts. Yeah. Then, uh... If we're there anyway, we could make a little profit whilst we're there. You know, you don't even have to talk to them. We could just go in and get that stuff in the middle of the night. My sister's not a cunt, though. Yeah, well, we'll leave your sister alone. We she stands to little. inherit, you know? Leave, leave my family out of it. I nod. All right. All right. But, uh, yeah, you know, we might as well make use of your name whilst you've still got it. So if you want to make a trip up there and get that stuff, maybe that'd be useful. Personal we could go mods. with you. You'll buy it for Steel Team 6. Yeah. Bring people looking like this home with me. 
gonna cause more problems. This is one I gotta do on my own. Yeah, but it's a dangerous road out there. You know, we could accompany you most of the way. You could go into the house on your own. He nods. It's thinks about it. Sips his seven silver coffee. Seven silver? Wow, inflation these days. <laughs> <He had a laughs> Three silver a minute well, ago. No, because he's mixing it with that fine spring water that's imported from cauldron now. Uh, so, you um, know, the, the nice. beans oh, are three silver, drink, the water. The cauldron water. <laughs> nice. That's good. I only drink cauldron water now. Mm hmm. Yeah, yes. maybe we could let the dwarves work and that'll give us some time. We can make a trip up north. We'll stay outside and not embarrass you in front of your family or anything. Yeah, we'll stay in the next village over or something. And, uh,. You know, obviously we're paying rent for horses as part of our monthly expenses, so 100%. we might as well we might as well take them. Yeah, no the horse rent. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Neil. Hundred grand a month must get us a horse for our one annual trip. It's not a hundred grand a month, it's a hundred gold a month, sir. No, yeah, no, no. Gold a month. Nick, 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 we'll take a carriage. Yeah, that's gotta be included. <laughs> you don't yeah, you well, there's no carriage. No, I wanna be on, I wanna be on the open road, you know? Oh yeah, you can right. you can ride a carriage there, no problem. Actually, there's no road. There's a road to Copper Hill, and then from no, there no, it's no. just. I think we need we need horses. None we of us have horseback ramble. riding proficiencies. Fuck. You can technically ride a, a, a horse that's broken in well enough. You can ride without a horseback riding proficiency. But if there's any sort of problem, you're going to run into problems. Like, you know, if there's combat or if there's, you know, a plastic bag, not that there's plastic around in this area, you know, horses get startled. You ever seen a horse startled by like the rustling yeah. of a plastic bag? It's very surprising. But like my mother-in-law has horses and I've been to their stables a whole bunch. And one day the wind picked up and there's just like a plastic bag to like cover a, a broken window somewhere temporarily and it rustled and the horse lost its fucking shit. Like these creatures are easily startled sometimes mm, de depending yeah. on the horse. Um, I just think on, that, you this know. This will be my second time out of the city. Let's just go, Luther. Let's get a horse. Yeah, fuck it. Get a horse. We'll leave these dwarves to do what they do best. Because <laughs> it's 300 gold for six horses, right? Uh, 75 so gold a horse. Oh, sorry, 450? So, no, 450. Yeah. yeah, but fuck it, that's nothing. We can do that. And then if we bring the horses back unharmed, we get some of that back, I assume. Yeah, you could probably resell them to um, the used horse salesman. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. There's always a used horse salesman. There's always <laughs> a used horse salesman. That's one of the three shops. <laughs> <laughs> There's the used horse salesman, the bar. <laughs> All right, I'm going to and... take off 450 gold. So we're at 5066. All right, and, and the then party. We're just gonna pay our monthly expenses now. What is that, Koibu? It's a six hundred. Yeah. All right, we're at four four I, six six. I bring enough coffee with me, Neil, <laughs> and cauldron spring water <laughs> to keep ourselves <laughs> hydrated. Hey, dwarves! We'll be back in a few weeks. Um, I bring my my Wait, chain mail. Before we go, yeah, bring your chain mail. I bring mine. And we want to grab. Um... We should we wait till after the identifiers cost? Yeah, we, we want to wait for the identify, and then we'll wait. Yeah. <clears throat> did you want to pick the eight items, Moot? Um, wait, I, that, did, I did put him in. Do the we know he's level eight? Who? It's one item per level, isn't it? So he told us eight items. Did he? Okay. Oh wow, that means he really wants that next level for not for the spells. Ninth level. Yeah. Yeah, we got lucky. Um, so then, yeah, so it's, uh, <clears throat> the longsword, the dagger, the three potions, that's five. Then there was, like, the two rings that we got from the big guy. That's seven. And then we could actually, we could do either the curved dagger that we stole, which we don't know is magical. We don't know. Or we could do one of the necklaces that we got. You know. I look at them uh, with my appraisals uh, proficiency and try and pick which is the most expensive, most likely to be magical. Was the was the guy wearing the the amulet? He was asleep, so he wasn't wearing it. Yeah. Okay. I think you should do the amulet. I you know. I appraise them, Neil. I pick okay. the one most Did likely you... to be magical. You didn't read off to me what the what the potions were because you read them to me before and i looked them up and oh i have them on my sheet yeah. um it is a misty purple vapor a creamy buttery yellow and a white cloudy potion the middle one's just buttermilk 
No, it's magical. Oh yeah, true. Magic puts a look. Well, I didn't have my paper it's, over. You said it, uh, you know, you know when you got a marinade fried chicken over in the buttermilk overnight. Yep. Well, it just does that, but it does it in twenty minutes instead of overnight. <laughs> It'd be a good one. <laughs> uh, misty purple vapor, Neil. Okay, hold on. Misty purple vapor. Mm -hmm. Put them in chat. That oh, thank cool. you. Perfect. Buttery white. Buttery wow. yellow. Oh, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> the wizard wanted one of them. So he's a fucker. Yeah, but he's not getting them. No, so. he's not. Because he has our memory stone instead. Now, we, we made out like bandits we did. on that session. We did. That was insane. <laughs> That wizard, he just, he fell for the Nick trap of, I really need a spell book, aka, I really need to level up. Please, yeah. I'll give you anything. I'll do anything, <laughs> yeah. But I get it. Ninth level, you get fifth level spells? Yeah, fifth level spells. So and he'll if, like, get, like, teleport. Oh, yeah. If he had, like, an adventure in mind to make fifth level spells, now he gets that before doing the adventure, so it's, like, yep. going to be so much safer. 100%. It's, okay. it's big for Malchus the wizard. Excellent. All right, I've got those written down. Okay. The, the third time that we've talked about these potions and the first time I've actually written down their their attributes. I mean, they're, they're pulled from a list, so I know exactly what they're... Yeah. They, their attributes haven't changed, but I just keep forgetting to write down their real names. Um, Luther, make sure you write these down in a book so we can find them in the future or <sighs> sell the knowledge. Are any of you yes, literate? Uh, I am. You are? There is. See, that's another place where your money is going. Ink, paper, paper pens. This Ink. shit's expensive. What am I writing? I don't uh, know, but just... you probably want a notebook or at least some scraps of paper and ink for to be able to write things at will, right? Um, I, tell, I know where some of my monthly expenses are going now. And that's, I'm building up a wardrobe. Mm, I bet. A wardrobe of fancy, nice clothes for yeah. all manner of disguises. Yeah. That's smart, yeah. You know, I'm even buying some like helmets and shit like that if I need to be like a knight or something like that. I'm building up a wardrobe. I'm not saying I'm doing it all in one month, but by the time we time skip the six months and our layers ready, if I have to like do a disguise, I want to have a disguise ready for it. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, except something like hugely exceptional. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's okay. smart. That's where See, we're going to be. The expenses are good. Yeah, and some uh, like makeup and stuff like that as well. Fake wigs, mustaches, <laughs> monocles. Mm hmm. A little bit of arsenic on the cheeks to, to lighten them. There you go. Pigeon's got a tipping problem. When he's out, he's, <laughs> you know, that's where most of his money's going. Just whoever's I, helping him. I Pigeon's wanna... actually skints at the end of the month as well. Huh? This is the sad that he's like skints at the end of the month. He's like, oh, yeah. He actually runs out <laughs> yeah. of his money. And it's like. You've literally given 70 gold away. In Come tips. on, guys, I need my money. <laughs> <laughs> we all know someone like that. But it buys friends, and that's what Pigeon's doing. We had a friend once. Well, no, he's still my friend. His name's Dom. And we were, like, living in squalor together after university. Like, we barely had, like, one job between, like, three of us. And he was just, like, living in our house for free without paying, like, any rent because he was, like, so skint. <laughs> And one day we're playing Halo or something and he gets a phone call from like a charity. You know, sometimes like a charity will come up, like ring you and ask yeah. you to like give money. These guys were ringing him up and asking him to increase his donation, which was <laughs> currently at 20 pounds a month to 30 pounds a month. And it was for like uh, endangered gorillas in Africa somewhere. <laughs> it's like you wow. can't pay us rent, but you're giving 20 pounds a month to these people just because you can't say no mm. to someone. Uh, Mr. Moon, <laughs> roll me a D100. Go on higher low. Uh, I don't think it matters. I got a 64. Okay. Here's a question for you about wizards identifying things. What happens if he fails? <laughs> That's what we're going to roll for later. <laughs> All right. Because, but if you, we've not paid him, so I guess it's fine. But if we had paid him, does he just try again tomorrow? No, it's you. He get paid for the attempt, like a comedian. You get paid for the attempt. Yeah. Also, if you fail to identify something, you can't identify it again until you level. Until next level. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the fact that this guy's level eight is actually really, really good. Really good. He's got quite yeah. a good chance of yes uh, 
I don't spike. Yes, okay. And Nicholas. Um, God, imagine think... going to your wizard and being like, hey, can you identify this? They're like, yeah, let me try. They fail. <laughs> that was, I did, I, did, I did my best. Yeah, especially <laughs> like, cause it's a level one spell. So you can be casting that shit at level one with a literally a 10% chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it 10%? Uh, is it 10% per level? 10% per level. Would you also roll yeah. me a D100, Nick? Yes, what would I like to get? Doesn't matter. What if I said to you I'm going to roll an 83? I wouldn't yeah. believe that you'd do it. Yeah, well, I wouldn't. So you'd be correct to not believe me. I was lying. Okay. So, you've picked your eight items that you wanted to identify, and you also wanted no, to appraise wait, I haven't. these rings, Sorry. right? Well, the, no, the, the eighth item is going to be either a necklace or a curved dagger depending on which one looks the most expensive right i'm opening up my loot table from that stupid yeah the curved dagger stupid... we stole from someone out of town like they came into town i think and then we took it from them that was almost it was like early. magical oh yeah Ah, here it is. Here it is. Okay. It was... Let's see it all here. Curved dagger. There was scimitar. Mm. Four daggers. Including a fancy one. There was the jeweled necklace. There were four ornate rings. But I think you sold most of this stuff already, didn't you? Check my character sheets, the house hoard, probably. Uh, we wouldn't have sold the rings. No, you sold four fancy rings and two fancy oh, necklaces. Yeah. There was yeah. some rings that he was wearing, though, I think, are the ones that we've yeah. still got. No, he had two ornate rings I have on the character sheet. Four fancy rings. Yeah. And we okay. probably want to do the two ornate rings. Yep. You want to mm -hmm. uh, appraise the two ornate rings, yeah? No, he wants to appraise. There was a curved dagger that we got a long time ago. Mm hmm. And then there was a, like, an amulet that he had. We want to appraise which one of those is worth more money because that's going to be our eighth item to uh, identify. Identify. And now the amulet, are we talking about that amulet from the Slayers that signifies that you're, um, you know, the leader of the Slayers? I think we should do that one, Nick, because that's like an old, old amulet. Does that look expensive enough to be magical? Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, so does the dagger look definitely like super expensive or not? You have, I mean, you have an appraisal skill, so why don't we just appraise all the things? Let's just. I did. I rolled a he 21. Rolled it. He rolled a 21. Ah, you did. Okay. Sorry. Appraising. Hi, da, 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 da. Successful proficiency check rolled by the DM enables the character to estimate the value of an item to its nearest 100 or 1000 GP and to identify fakes. On a failed check, the character cannot estimate your price at all. On a roll of one, the character wildly misreads the value of the item, always to the detriment of the character. So I'm going to roll these in secret. Your bonus is plus 10. So the um, Slayer Necklace, uh, you estimate to be about 300 GP. Ooh, okay. The Dagger, um, you estimate to be about 500 GP. Okay, do the Dagger, I guess. We'll get a race. It's a cross check here. Does he have appraisal as well? Yeah. Good. I'm still learning, right? So uh, this is how I've been getting my proficiency yeah, erasers been helping sense. me. So. Yeah, and erasers check is 17. Oh, because it's int based. Um, Holy fuck. Yeah. You, you, how do you bring the stagger to eraser? <clears throat> Double check. I think I get like a sheet that I've folded in the dagger and the uh, the amulet in. Mm -hmm. And then I like, he's sitting downstairs. I come down to the table and I open the sheet and say, Eraser, mm, 
we've got one more thing that we can give to the wizard to identify, and I'm trying to work out what's most likely to be magical. I reckon uh, I unfold the sheet and I say, I reckon the dagger here looks uh, more exquisite than the amulet. Mm -hmm. What do you think we should do? Uh, he takes a look over it, weighs it in his hand, pulls out um, a, what do you call it? Um, like a little basin, fills it with water from a pitcher, you know, mm. starts to submerge it in the, the basin, you know, feeling it as it submerges. And he shakes his head and goes, nah, it's just a, a curved dagger. It's worthless. Glad I checked with you. I thought it was a... Uh more expensive than that. Well, so what? You reckon it's this fake gold? No, no, no. It's not even. It's probably some sort of brass that's been mixed just right to make it look like gold. And these mm. gems right here, these aren't diamonds. These are little quartz stones. It, it's made to look like it would be super fancy, but it's just a knockoff. What about the amulet? Take a look at the amulet. It was pretty good. About three hundred GP. <laughs> Someone rolled a one. Someone oh. rolled a one, yeah. Did I, uh, of course. Now, that's 300 GP to mm -hmm. the average person, but to someone from the Slayers, quite a lot more. This is old, though. You think this could be magical? I mean, it's unlikely, right? But maybe we should check. Hire someone to... I mean, it's only 100 GP. No, no, the guy's already casting it. He can cast it. He can look at eight things. Ah, well then, yeah, sure, why not? I don't think we got eight things to send them to, so go for yeah. it. All right, yeah, so we'll include the amulet. Although I do recall that we given the instruction to, you know, if there's more than one property on something, like don't, like if there's more than one property on one of the swords that we know is magical, mm -hmm. then, then don't forego working out the second property in order to cast it on the amulet. Mm. If you know what I'm saying. Like prioritize the and swords. And the rings. Yeah, and the rings. Well, we don't know the rings are magical, right? No, we have no idea, so I, that's why I'm saying, yeah. We could get him to use Detect Magic on the rings beforehand and the amulet to see if they are magical before he casts on them. All right, that's fine. We'll, we'll pay him for it, obviously. Yeah, we'll give him an extra 50 gold or whatever to cast the Detect whatever Magic. Whatever the fuck he wanted. All right. Here it is, everyone. The time for our first magic items. Okay. So... You have four ornate rings. Actually, you gave one of them to what's their face. So you just have two ornate rings remaining, two right? Two ornate rings, yep. All right, and those are also yep. going on the list. Mm-hmm. So the order is potion, 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 dagger, longsword, amulet, rings. Yeah? Say that again, sorry. Potion, 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 potion. dagger, longsword, amulet, rings. Yeah. Yeah, that's but Check that the amulet and the rings the are magical rings. first. Check if they're magical. We'll pay him. Okay. That's going to be an extra 100 GP to cast I'll Detect Magic. Up. Done. Uh, your amulet and rings are non-magical. Okay. Good. All right. Then you can get all the properties from the other ship. Okay. Misty Purple Vapor Potion. Success. It is a potion of invisibility. That's good. Ooh. Ooh. Are you... Fly. Ooh, ah. Um, now, when you get this back, I'm going to hand wave setting the scene. You're doing, you know, it's a special location, blah, 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 blah. This isn't in public, blah, 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 blah. Um, when he gives you this back, he wants, he lets you know that these potions are inherently unstable and they need to be kept in this glass. And he bothers to tell you that the reason you keep them in glass is glass is very um, insulating and non-reactive, right? If you uncork this potion and you try and like pour it in a cup, when it mixes with the air, it's going to change and you might ruin it. You might amplify it, unlikely to amplify it. You could to toxicify it, like shit goes mm. wrong. So when you have these potions, they're sort of uncork and drink all at once. It's not, you know, yeah. don't, don't go trying to pass them around or anything. Um, the next potion, the creamy buttery yellow one, uh, he actually fails. Ooh. Fucking loser. Magic buttermilk. The white cloudy potion. He also fails. Wow, okay, those are bad fine. We're options. Out. Say. We're out of the way. All right. The, the dagger, dagger of throwing. Wait, it's the dagger of throwing. Well, hold on. 
It's a dagger of throwing. Okay. That's what he just said, which is sick. Plus one? What does it get? Um. So he tells you that this dagger has increased range. It functions as a normal dagger when you use it, but when you go to throw it, it will fly much farther than any other dagger. Um, and on throwing and throwing only, it has bonuses to hit and damage. All right. Can I add um, it to my sheet? Yes. Uh, and the longsword, believe it or not, is a failure. Wow, those are very unlikely. But he rolled an 88, a 95, and an 83. Um, I am so sorry. All right. Uh, was that all of our shit? The short yeah. sword. Oh, the short sword. I know. We already, nope, he already not. said that's not magical, right? Yep. All right. Oh. What's my to hit on the throwing dagger? Um, it's the same. I'll apply modifiers until you figure it out. Cool. Wait, does he, does he not say? No. Oh, oh he, um, can't, well, he can't say? He's got more rolls. It, identify never reveals an exact attack or damage bonus, although oh, the cool. fact that it has fewer many bonuses can be determined. And he oh. didn't have any more bonuses. Got no. it. Hit zero, so, zero. Right. that was a crock of shit, wasn't it? I am so sorry. All right. Th those all should have been identified. There were only five things, 80% chance I on each like one of them. We should have rolled, potentially. Fine. Mm. It is what it is. All right. He also so... actually failed the dagger of throwing, but since I had already said throwing, I just... <laughs> <laughs> what, you failed that as well? Yeah, well, but we'll since I that. said dagger of throwing, you just rolled Holy with it. Fuck. Yeah. Good, good. You rolled well for yourself. Yeah, yeah, you rolled well for yourself. Mistakes happen. All okay, right. well, now that we've got our gear, I guess we'll... The sword's got to be magical. No, if the sword is magical, that was confirmed, was it? Confirmed. When did we When do we get a weapon proficiency? Levels divisible by four? Oh, two more levels then. Yeah. You should that have should... three weapon proficiencies right now. Uh... If you don't, you've been saving one. No, I've got three. Okay. Uh, I have three. Wait. Lasso, dagger, two weapon fighting style. Yep. As a rogue, what's my minus for using a long sword if I have a short sword proficiency? Minus three. Is there not yeah, a little bit of um? Long sword is slashy, overlap? slashy. Um, short sword is stabby, stabby. They're they're pretty is it, different is concepts. It? Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because with the long sword, arming sword, you're trying to use the entire length of the blade, uh, and the short sword mm. is much more of um, like a shanking weapon. I feel like we shouldn't sell the long sword, and I should just take long sword proficiency when we level up. Because what else to do with the proficiencies, right? I think we should sell it. But it's like we've got a lot of gold. We've not got any magic items. I think it's fine to bank it and sell it later on. Yeah, okay. Or keep it. You, you're never going to be able to use a long sword to backstab. No, not to backstab, but in an actual fight, though. I don't care. Oh. <clears throat> okay, well, we go to visit the used horse shop. D did you say used horse? Used yeah, we horse. Need, we, no, we okay. need the new horse shop, and then we're going to sell them at the used horse shop. Sure. Your scouts or accent made it sound like the used horse shop, and I was just... No, yes. um, but we no, we need to visit the used horse shop to buy our horses too. Yeah, well, you go to the shop. You're gonna get some. Unless horses. we go to the, unless you want to get them from the fresh horse shop. <laughs> originally, <laughs> there is a stable outside of town, uh, and there's one inside of town. But the one inside pays uh, is a little bit more expensive. So you can head out the north edges of town um, to go find the stable and go get yourself some horses. And since you're paying 100 GP a month for expenses, we're just going to hand wave all the, you know, traveling supplies and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. Not worry about it. And where is my... Where are we going, by the way? Percival's. Yeah, I know that. But where, oh, where is that? Oh, dead. Oh, that's a long way. It we're is. We're going on an adventure, boys. Yeah. Has everyone uh... got their um, cauldron water? I right, look. Everyone's Check got their cauldron spice. water. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got my uh, chain mail. Yeah. And I wanted great. to see, I guess maybe, I don't know if this can be done now or after, but I wanted to get the gang studded leather. Yeah, maybe we should order it before we leave, actually. 
We wanted to get some custom made studded leather. Um, yeah. You guys can get custom studded leather for yourself, but Eraser, Helmet, and Percival and Sierra don't want any. But, really? Yeah. Really? We're we're not we're not trying to pick a fight with someone. I don't know who the hell you think you are, but Steel Team Six is not Assault Team Six. Yeah, but out there, There's, I point. People are gonna come at you. <sighs> you don't have to wear it in the city. Wait, you just want to buy leather before we go order leather armor before we go on our horse ride for our horse ride? Fight. Are you even thinking this through, pigeon? Shake my head, no. <laughs> but, but what happens if people are coming? You you know you need it. You're gonna uh, just magically be sitting right next to your armor and then be like, oh wait. Someone's going to be here in five minutes. Let me put on my armor before they arrive and then just have your armor on. No, when someone shows up and you're going to be in a fight, you're not going to know what's coming. You got to be ready. If you're just scrambling around to get your armor on, you're wasting combat rounds. It's not effective for action economy. No, 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 no. Armor is for little bitches and for people who think that they're badass soldiers when in actuality, they're just dead men walking. Well, well say what you like, Eraser. When I'm wearing my chain mail out here, I say <laughs> yeah. looking around. Could be anything on these roads. Let's go. <clears throat> um, um, so just for record keeping here, uh, on the night of October 9th is when you made your deal with the wizard and the dwarf um, for the lair building. The lair building didn't actually start because it takes like a week for anyone to show up to do anything. And that's oh, pretty fast. Go. He's going to ask for another 600 gold. Um, you you didn't pay? start building the lair until the 17th. Uh, and so you're leaving for Meadstead on the 18th. Um, now you did just pay your 600 gold. So that's However, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a day where you will have to pay more money. It is coming. <laughs> I promise oh, you. There always is. There always is with you Americans. There's always somebody with their hand in your pocket. You know, uh, when you start spending 2.2% 2. <clears throat> 2 of your GDP on defense, then we can stop talking about what you owe and what wow, you don't. No, right. we do. We do spend two cents by GDP you do? defense. Thank you. Yeah, we do. Yeah, Canada doesn't. Are, we are the only ones. Well, Fucking thank you. And we're thank increasing you. it to two point five. Yeah, thank God. Thank you. It's about You're time. Welcome. Canada, get your shit together. That's right, Canada. Yeah, uh, and during Finland. Our adventure i'm going to how did finland get in if they're not going to fucking pay i That's, think they are i'm just shit okay. talking our newest finland. members yeah. good it's the thing about finland though i've read a conspiracy theory that finland doesn't actually exist and it's a conspiracy between japan and russia to conceal whale fishing now it's, <laughs> it, it sounded quite convincing it's been a while since i read it but i'm just throwing it out there has anyone ever been to helsinki lucas no mm -mm. neil no no there you go oh by the way Cut back to the scene in game. I say to a race, I'm leaving my armor on. And then I say, come on, Lucas. And I kick my horse because my horse is called Lucas. Good. <laughs> uh, during our trip, I'm going to be trying to figure out this throwing dagger, obviously. Yep. So I'll be throwing it at trees and throwing yep. it at um, rabbits. The line in the DMG somewhere that I can't find right now that no, says you don't you're... need to quote it to me. That's fine. Just, right. just the, the answer You got to wait for there. combat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, All right, do I, uh, does this dagger like reappear in my hand? It does not. Not a dagger no, that returning. That is a shame. That would That's be OP shame. though. That's, a shame. That's good though. All right. It is good. Finland says they plan on spending 2.3, but they haven't done it yet. We'll see. All right, on to Meadstead. I'm going to bring us to the oh. overland map. What even is 2.3% of Finland's GDP? Like, could you even buy, like, one plane with 2.3% of Finland's GDP? It's 282 billion. 283 times 0 0.02. 5.6 billion. I mean, how much <laughs> How much does a Pfizer jet cost? Probably less than that. They could probably have, like, six of them. Well, you don't need fighter jets to be in Finland. For Finland, you just need um, nice military bases so that the rest of NATO can forward... Um, deploy. Hmm. But a nice F-35 is 110 million. Yeah, they can buy a few. Oh, oh shit. Watch yeah. out, Finland's got a whole fleet of these fucking things. Okay. Yeah. Right. And sleep on Finland. I mean, you can't spend all your GDP on planes in one year. Like, you still have to pay your actual people and maintain the rest of your gear. <laughs> <laughs> if I was in charge of the military. Look, it's all of our planes. 
<laughs> They're just sitting there on the ground, not doing anything because you didn't hire any pilots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's in the budget for next year. <laughs> oh my god, we haven't seen this map in so long. Yeah. Holy shit. All right. So we're just going to do a nice quick journey from Stromheim oh, to Copper Hill uh, to Meadstead. Yeah, you, don't, you don't need we this. We got to go through the thistle. We got to go through the thistle for forest. Um, so what's his face? Um, Percival says the best way is actually just to follow the river uh, and then follow the edge of the woods so you don't have to go through the woods. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Wise. When's the last time you were home, Percival? In five, six years. You think like they that? miss you? I hope my sister does. The rest of my family, I don't know. They probably think I'm dead or something. All right. Are we going to get to meet him? He shakes his head. You're going to stay in the village outside of town. What if there's a ball? You're going to stay <laughs> in the village outside of town or I'm not taking you with me. All right, fine. Percival, what if they, uh, what if they try and convince in you In the stay? village? Outside of town. <laughs> All right. You, you are now the if, village people. What if they try and convince you to stay? They're going to be pretty happy to see you alive. You got to make sure your heart's set, brother, before you go in there. I don't think there's anything they could say to convince me. What if they lock you up? <sighs> then we'll bust them out. All right. Yeah. We'll wait a week and then we'll bust you out. They'd be fools. They'd be fools. Okay. All right. The road between Lucas. Stromheim and <laughs> Copper Hill. Uh, let me get out my handy dandy encounter table. Ooh, where's a Can I roll for Lucas's HP actually? It's 3d8 plus three, isn't it? I'm not going to oh. stop you from rolling whatever dice you want. Okay. Oh. <laughs> my horse is. Yours heavy. is healthy, boy. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> Schnickel Fritz the right third. <laughs> if only. I'll never get Tight. to use that horseback riding Horse. proficiency. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I haven't opened this in a million years. This is my next character's strength. Unlucky. Let's just try mine. I got excited when I saw the six, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> All right, Nick, give me that yes. D100. We you want high it. or low? We want to fight. I, I don't know. I, I think it's an alphabetical. Oh, that's good. Let's go. We're all going to die. All right. The first night, the six of you and your six horses make camp. I think Percival has a horseback riding proficiency. Wait, we need a name he for the does. horses. Like a group name for them. I'm going to work on it. Hang on. The, the studs of Stromheim. Um. You make your camp. It's the first night any of you, well, most of you have ever spent outside. There's no comfortable bed. You know, you, you bought whatever traveling things that the, the horse dealer sold you. And so you've got like a bedroll, but it's not super comfortable. You've got uh, a little campfire that Percival put together because he actually has some real skills in this capacity. And the rest of you are, you know, comfortable city Losers. boys. Yeah. Um, and you're settling in for a nice sleep outside of the old city of Copper Hill. You're maybe, you know, just before the bridge a little ways. Everyone's settling down for a nice long nap. <laughs> but out here in the wild's a little spooky. You know, the the drone of the city is faded away. The, the little bit of lights that spill out from people's homes are gone. The nice tall walls that provide you a little bit of enclosure is mm. gone. And out there, just unwalled wilderness as far as the eye can see. There could be anything out here. Any number of creatures, any number of people. What? What even is out here, guys? What's going on? Well, I don't, I, I don't know, but there literally could be anything out anything. here. And this literally is anything. Literally anything. I think, who's, uh, can Luther be on watch at this time? Do you even set watches? Do you know well enough to set watches? 
this person? You tell me. Um, I think Eraser would notice set watches. I actually don't think that we would, but Eraser's like 17N, right? So he's got He's 17N. Percival's actually military trained, I would assume. Uh, yeah, he was noble, so he's got that sort of, um, you know, he was squired. He was being trained to be someone. He should yeah. know. Right. You we'll tell us, Neil. I don't, I, don't, I don't think Luther or Pigeon would maybe I wouldn't, notice I wouldn't that watches. Yeah. Percival says, you know, we should keep an eye out. It's a dangerous road. You passed some folks earlier in the day. It's not like everyone's getting mugged every single day, but like it happens enough that out here in the night, in the dark, where no one can hear you scream, it's worth, you know, making a little camp. And he'll even Very take wise. you off the road a little bit and try and find like a pair of, of rocks to hide the little camp in between. Um, and he'll bring the horses over let them graze, tie them up, tell you guys oh, to, oh. you know, split up your watches. Whoever's out here has to be worried about us. We're the, we're the bandits. Yeah. Pigeon says scared. I look around. Um, so I think Luther is on watch and wondering, like, you know, the noises of the forest. Like maybe mm -hmm. there's like um, a, a mountain lion scream that kind of sounds like a weird person dying, right? It's like all mm -hmm. sorts of strange noises that if you've never slept outside of a city, you're never going to heard before. So Luther is genuinely terrified, I think, while he's on watch. You hear what sounds like a child crying in the distance. <laughs> like, and yeah. knowing that this is a road traveled by people, it could legitimately be a small child who has gotten lost um, or whose camp has just been attacked or it could be some sort of fey creature or hag pretending to be a small child trying to lure you out. Um, but there are strange noises in the night. Would Luther have heard f stories about fey creatures or is that something that oh, probably yeah. wouldn't have been talked? Oh yeah, would have I been? mean, you would, you would know stories. I don't think you would know what is reliable information and what oh, yeah, is just like- yeah, I know like... what I mean, but the idea mm -hmm. that that could be a fey creature, mm -hmm. do you think that's something that would come to mind? Oh yeah, totally. So I ignore it at first. Okay. How long does it go on for? Like, is it still happening five minutes no, later? You you hear the the child like scream two or three times, and then it just goes quiet. What was it saying? Um, you couldn't quite make out any distinct words, but it definitely sounded like the common tongue. But you know, you you hear a cry. It's short. It's not like a, a monologue. You can't quite discern what was said. Then it just ends. But we're near Copper Hill, right? You're near Copper Hill, but not close enough to hear anything from Copper Hill. Also, Copper Hill's been abandoned. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah. Well, like, if it, if it starts, then it stops pretty quickly. I don't react immediately, and it stops, so I ignore it. Yeah. It's, it's what you do. It's what you gotta do. There's not a lot you can do unless you're just gonna get up and run after the very first sound you hear, and that's crazy. Who would do that? Not me. Who would? Who would? Well, um, why don't you, Nick, since you're on watch, roll me a d6. Is this the number of monsters attacking me? It's Probably not a big deal. the number that you're in watch at. That's it. Two. Okay. You wake up Pigeon for his next shift. Pigeon. Uh, You're on watch. You're on watch. Get up. Uh, it's, right. There's some weird, weird noises out there. Just, I think it's just like the the birds. Why are the bandits? Not them. That's right, yeah. Put my just chain mail keep, on. Yeah. You know, stay vigilant. My dagger. It's uh, scary out there. I'm not going to lie. If you hear uh, a little girl, wake me up. Go to bed. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm just tired. Luther clutches up to his blanket and uh, puts his back against like a tree or something like that to try and get some semblance of. Yeah, unfortunately, protection. out here, there's not a lot in the way of trees. Um, something is going to happen to you. I just want to give you a quick preview of what your camp situation looks like. You know, you're just kind of huddled in between these rocks okay. and you've tied well, up your horses nearby. Rock, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you're interested. But I have 17 perception. You do. You're very perceptive. You got these big oh, yeah. bulging eyes. You're perceptive enough to have realized 
before you went to bed after after you guys found Rat Boy in your dungeon, that he had peed on your pillows. Each and every one of your pillows <laughs> in your house had been peed on. Oh my god, oh. that fucker! Mm-hmm. Disgusting. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a good job you killed him. Yeah. What disgust? Who would do that? Who would do that? It's disgusting behavior. He's an also, <laughs> out, out of character, did, did Peachel have that idea himself? Yes. That was Peachel's idea. Yes, he walked How around from. We've, we've both had the same idea because that's what we've been doing is peeing on everyone's stuff bandits, as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. he knew that you guys were the wet bandits, and I don't know if uh, he had that idea or if that's just uh, a D and D player idea thing to do. Is I'm going to pee on their beds. Um, it must be. Uh, I think that's just well. innate in every D and D player is a uh, bed. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Fair play to him. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take a short break while I set up this encounter because something's about to happen and we'll come back on the other side with a little bit more Hardly Heroes. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hardly Heroes. So, you're asleep, Luther. Pigeon, Yes. you're on watch. And you've got that 17 perception. It's so good. And that's why you're able to spot sneaking into the camp. Um, maybe I shouldn't say sneaking to the camp. You hear the sound of growling coming from through this passageway, through the little camp area on the far side. It's like a low rumbling. I'll probably take a, I assume we have like a torch that I can just light in the fire. Um, well, I think your fire is out by now because there's uh, not enough uh, light. I'm sorry, not light. Um, wood around. You can see this is pretty. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty barren area. I will. Uh, but you've heard a lot of noises in the night, right? You've heard strange screeches. You've heard the sound of birds. You heard the sound of something that sounded like um, like a person being murdered, just like a weird screaming cry. And then it was just one. Then it was gone. Like there's a bunch of weird noises in the night. All I would the probably time. go and just check out the camp. Like, mm -hmm. just make sure everybody's chilling in the bed and everybody's yeah. here. Yeah, and that's so the I'll problem. Because that's, that's what you would expect to do. Yeah. And it's as you, you do that that the attack comes. I need you to roll me. You have a um, 17 perception, right? You've yeah. got a surprise adjust of two. You want to roll a, a one or better D10. on a D10. Mm -hmm. You rolled a one. You needed to roll better Fantastic. than one. Oh, well, you said Sorry. one or better. I, I misspoke. You need to roll better oh, than I one. I didn't know what I we needed have to, to roll. We have to re-roll it. Well, you rolled the worst you could possibly roll. Um, unfortunately for you, you are surprised by the scampering of paws on the ground and coming up behind you. As soon as you started to move away, it's a pair of wolves. Oh and with back attack oh and surprise, the wolves leap on you. I have 16 AC. What's this Maybe 16 not from? You got I'm wearing my chain mail. That gives you 13. All right. Right? Uh, it's not a three... full suit. It's just a chain shirt, right? That's correct. Extra no, threes decks. from my decks. Yeah, but not on back attacks. You don't get decks. So I'll take 13 AC. All right. Good old chain mail. Yeah. Good yep. old chain mail. 13 AC um, negated by their the plus sounds three to hit. Pigeon being eaten to the eaten alive wake me up. Most likely, you will be able to roll into initiative next round. But for now, <laughs> we get a bite, Miss? seven to hit, and a second one, which is a natural, oh, 20, natural 20, which will bite right you table. for two plus another 1d4 plus one. Minimum oh, damage yeah. of minimum four. Yeah. They roll d4 plus one, which is lucky for them. Yeah. And then the d4 gets added a second time. Uh, crit table. Since we're doing crit tables in this campaign, we are. Um, we're gonna roll a one d10 for location, and a one d6 for severity. It's not gonna be much. No. You're teeth fine. Are piercing versus actually these teeth are small enough to just be slashing versus humanoids. Location three is your left leg. Um, your leg is struck. You have minor bleeding. You'll take 1d2 points of damage every 10 minutes. When the battle's over, we should patch you, you up. Find it. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Rolling Excellent. Um, we're going to roll in. I want everybody who is sleeping to roll in at an additional plus three to initiative because you're waking up. Yes.
All right, I'm rolling in. Hmm. He's freaking dogs. They ain't dogs though, are they? They're wolves, but you wouldn't know. Wouldn't know. These dogs are huge. <laughs> Some big dogs, man. Oops, I forgot to include the. <laughs> what are they feeding them out here? Not people, evidently. Like, I wonder if you didn't know about wolves, if you would just think that dogs that ate people became wolves. Hmm. I feel like I would think that. What do you think about bats, Luther? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds you start. What, what, what do you mean? Uh, and then since these people are all sleeping, ripped off. they get another yeah. penalty of three, three, seven, eleven, eight. There we go. And Luther, you did a penalty of three on your I initiative. Did. Lovely. All right. Are you short sword, by the way? Perfect. I did it manually. Great. Um. Okay. First up is uh, this wolf right here. Pigeon, you're managing to turn around. You bit my leg. You haven't had initiative yet. The wolf just gets a second bite. The, you know, first wolf hits you. The second wolf gets his paws on you, puts his teeth in your neck. You scream as the second wolf goes and uh, I guess I got it, your leg. And the second wolf will- I have to be an initiative? I'm no longer surprised though. I you're no longer decks. surprised, but it still goes right. before you're able to react and it will, again, roll miss. a seven to hit you. Wild miss. Eraser, the wolf, stumbling. The wolves not got claws wake. as well, no? No, they just get teeth. Oh, um. Sad. Eraser will stumble to his feet, draw his short sword, and uh, throw it at the first thing, will plunge it into the first body he can find, which is a nice 19 to hit for three damage on the wolf. Real good damage there, Eraser. Um, Pigeon, you're next. I whirl around, and I get two attacks because I stab twice. Here's my first one. Mm -hmm. uh, not thrown, just melee. So, 16. Oh, beautiful. Maybe four. For four. Oh, Maybe. so good. Do I get any plus from level for nope. damage? You never get no. damage from level. And I'm going to get him again. About 18. Oh, he Fantastic doesn't miss this guy. Hit. For one. Ex average damage overall the round. Very good. Uh, Percival slowly gets. Help me, there's up. dogs. <laughs> Um, and as he does, he will cry out, they're over here too. Oh shit. Um, and he will, whoops, wrong lair, get to his feet, draw his short sword and- You better not die, we need him. Yeah, we need him. Well, we could turn this into a heist for He's him. gonna step over <laughs> here, or back a little bit and ready an attack for anything that comes towards him. Um, and that's when out of the darkness, straight towards Eraser. Whoosh. Oh my God, there's loads of them. Eight to hit, wild miss on Eraser. These wolves suck. He's not um, gonna think armor's so dumb now, is he? Pigeon, it is your turn. You've already gone though. Mm, I already went. Oh, you were in initiative twice somehow. Oh, we'll just take your first one. I don't one. see myself twice. Mm -hmm. I already How went. many yeah. rounds does it take Sierra. to put on chainmail shirt? Uh, one round. One round? Yeah. Sierra will get up, uh, grab a short sword. Now, Sierra's not a real combat tactician like the others. Sierra um, will just follow Percival's lead and get a short sword and kind of look around in a panic, not knowing what to do. Helmet will get to his feet, making terrible decisions. Maybe not terrible decisions. Helmet turns his back and jumps to the fight. With a short sword stab, it's another natural, natural 20. Oh, hell no. Um, actually, that should be a D6, eight. not a D4. Uh, yes, eight points of damage to the wolf, just enough to take it down, and the wolf dies on the spot. Good job, helmet. Uh, and that is one dead wolf, and Luther finally getting to his feet. Uh, yeah, I think surveying the scene, hearing wolves to the south and in front of me, I take the round to put my chainmail on. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Um, and we're going to do this and this. Um, 
And this, yeah, another wolf comes in at Pigeon from the side. This one, once again, trying to throw itself on you and bite you, Pigeon. 17 to hit, 18 to hit for three points of damage. Its teeth sink in past your armor, pushing it to the side, making contact with your flesh. And we roll initiative. Here it comes, Nick. Let's go. You don't touch my boss. <laughs> All right. Pigeon, you are first. I whip my magic throwing dagger at this guy. Uh, you are adjacent to people. Throwing your dagger is not a good idea when you're adjacent to other folks. I'm sure there's some penalty for it, right? Because you're essentially ignoring the, the combatants to your right, to your left, to throw something. That's true. There's, All right. There's, there's no rules for that with bows, though. There is. is there's firing at someone who is moving at you, and you can do it on the first attack of your, if you've got multiple range... There's a rule here. I know there is. I just haven't looked it up in a while. The rule about shooting at someone, and if they're moving towards you, you you can make your first shot without penalties, but after that, you are in melee, and then you get... All right. I'm just going to look it up. I'll I did I did a lot of ranged bow fire as Imric, and I seem yeah, to remember Yeah, but you were that. never in melee at the time. Sure. I was in melee constantly. Actually... <laughs> But um, now that I'm thinking about it, I think, I'm sure it's like in 5e it's really bad, but in 2e it's not. Maybe I'm... I think in 5e you get disadvantage if you're firing a ranged weapon in melee. Oh. There's a rule. I want to look it up because it was a good rule. And I seem to recall it just being slightly a pain in the ass to handle when you've got a lot of players, but there's only two of you now. Page 20 and 25. Firing or throwing missiles is dangerous when a character is threatened by another creature since it creates an attack of opportunity. The only exception Ooh. to this rule is during the same combat round that the threatening creature actually moves to threaten the character. The character can get his shots in while the enemy closes, but after that, he had better switch to a melee weapon. Characters with multiple missile attacks in the same combat round perform their first attack on normal, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if the wolf is charging you, even if it beats you in initiative, you can get yeah. your first missile attack at it, but after that, you gotta go to melee, or you provoke an attack of opportunity from both the wolves next to you. Oh, fuck that then. I'll yeah. just attack them. Great. Alright, yep. I'm gonna attack the one in front of me. Here you go. Natural oh. 20. 23. You want a d10 and then a d6? Or? I do. I want a d10. d10. Uh, 2d4, because wolves are actually size small. Okay. Probably nothing. Nope, it's definitely nothing. All right. Uh, so that's going to be... 2d4 damage. damage. 2d4. Yeah. Four. All right. Four damage to the wolf. Attack. Please. Ten. Miss. They have 13 okay. AC. Dish. Okay. Um, this wolf over here is coming for Imric. Imric. Look, you're trying to attack Imric in melee. He's not even in the fucking game. Ah, 15 ah, will hit. <laughs> You'll take four damage. Oh, I assume I'd healed from my previous stun. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, this one over here is going after Eraser. 17 for three. Okay. Excellent. Eraser's got good HP. The race has got good uh, This one will go after Pigeon again. Natural, Natural one. one. Uh, let's give him a saving throw versus death. Uh, zero successes. Yeah. I think our wolf um, It's only off by three. Balls? I don't know. Um, yeah, I just think it, you know, you get a plus one to hit him okay. if you attack him this round. Wow. And Luther, you get your shirt all the way on. <clears throat> just in time to pick my sword back up mm. and uh, attack this wolf after it mm -hmm. bites me. Mm -hmm. uh, you're late for doggy daycare. 
Natural oh, one. <laughs> Saving throw versus death. Um, Goes to stab, oops. gets it stuck in a rock. You also <laughs> have a penalty of one to AC until the next round. Um, helmet, still in combat, doesn't want to get closer to any of these things, so he'll shift one to the side yes, and stab. Good one. Uh, with a nine is no good. And Eraser will turn to face the one that he's fighting and stab with a three for damage. Um, badly wounding the wolf he's facing. Uh, the one against you, Pigeon, is not doing so hot. Um, he does succeed in rolling lower than his morale, so he's doing great. Okay. Um, and he stays in the fight and will bite you for three more damage. Leading us with getting Percival. Nibbled on over there. I'm getting slowly <laughs> beat down. Uh, and Percival says, Sierra, let's do it! And charges into the darkness oh, um, with a miss. There is combat happening move, off into the darkness. Nice. Percival will take a ton of damage. Oh. Nice. Um, and Sierra is going to make a morale check to charge into the darkness. Oh my god, Sierra. Uh, but Your will brothers. pass. That is not a morale check. That was a saving throw. Uh, will fail the morale check and uh, back up into the corner over here. <laughs> leaving Percival, us with Pigeon. No! Uh, next round of initiative, right? Oh yeah, initiative. Thank you. Sierra's got to get reprimanded for this. This is yeah, cowardly behavior. I expected more from Sierra, honestly. Really, from Sierra? Yeah, from Sierra. Yeah, I okay. expected more from. Him. Okay. <clears throat> I think that's everybody. Um, this wolf passed his morale check last round, hasn't taken any damage since, so he will bite natural, natural one. one. Oh no. Uh, oh, I think the wolf like lunges at you, but you manage to step aside and the wolf like ends up moving into this position and in the process provokes an attack of opportunity from you. Nice. Sick. Uh, uh, back but, back? Yep, that'll hit. All right. Oh, for one. But All right. That does um, provoke another morale and check. you can tell me which way you're facing now. Uh, probably somewhere, somewhere like this. Yeah, perfect. There you go. Like stab with one arm. Mm-hmm. Uh, helmet, seeing the wolf behind him, will turn and stab that wolf immediately, easily hitting it for three, bringing it almost to dead. Luther, fully equipped, ready to rumble. Natural twenty Let's go. incoming. Oh, critical yeah. hit. It's a critical hit, baby. 2d6. Two, yes. Plus. Plus. One? Do you have high strength? One. I do have high strength. Die! Seven damage. Nice. And d10 uh, and uh, oh, a d8? short sword is a medium weapon? Yeah. The d6? If it's a medium weapon, I think you roll 2d8. Oh, 2d8? Yeah, because the wolves are size small, and if you are a weapon, oh, yeah. that it, it, the the severity is dependent on weapon size versus creature size, and if you're a size larger, no, you roll 2d6 if you're a size larger. 2D6. Thank you. All right, so I get a 2 for location and a 6 for severity. Okay, a table that automatically does 2 for location. Yep. Yeah. Is six. leg six for severity? Leg injured, minor bleeding, two thirds movement. All Got right, him. so this thing All is right. slightly crippled. Where That's is right, my wolf. slightly crippled? Okay, we're just gonna do this for slightly crippled. Done. Um, this wolf down here is gonna make himself a morale check, and yeah, this wolf is done. Um, he's going to howl. And back into the darkness. This is a, what disengage. we're going to call withdrawal. Yeah, disengage. Out into the oh. darkness. Sierra. There's a wolf Quivering. directly in front of him. Can he do it? No. Sierra withdraws again. Away from so the wildly like wounded wolf. There, like, shaking. Quivering? Blade yeah. shaking. Yes, absolutely. Um, pigeon. 
uh, I attack the wolf in front of me. Yeah. 18. Excellent hit. This is the, the healthy 21. wolf, right? Yep, the healthy wolf. Excellent. So for three and for two, so five. Uh, the 21's a crit, so roll me another d4. Mm. 24 slash roll what? 2d, 2d, 2d6, you said? No, you're the same size, so you roll 2d4. 2d4. Roll d10 for the fishing. So nine for five. Dagger is for the stabbing. And in our first real combat, we can see why this system is annoying. Yeah, it just I takes too long. Yeah. Uh, victim stunned for a round. Oh, nice. shit. Okay. Yeah. See, I want to make... There's nine tables here, and yeah. I think if I yeah. can find a way to put those tables into roll 20 so we can just click on the table and click on severity and have it output the, the thing automatically, that'd be great. Yeah. But having to look it up each round is too much. Um, yeah, you fuck up the wolf, dude. You fuck up the him. wolf. Um, this one down here, here's the, the howl. Whoops. Passes and goes ahead to bite Percival anyway with another oh, no. lovely hit. Percival's getting wounded. Eraser. He's got, he's, got four, though. he's got a half decent health, surely. Yeah, you know his health. Um, eraser will come and probably just finish this guy off. Ooh. Yep. Dropping a wolf. The next wolf over here doesn't need to make a morale check. Uh, he just automatically is withdrawing into the darkness. Percival well, with two thirds move. Yeah. Percival misses. Uh, the stunned wolf cannot do anything, and it is initiative time. Yeah, right. they've they've all they're all dead around you, pigeon. You're a wolf slaying machine. Oh my god. All right, Pigeon, once again, the fastest man in the in the center All of the right. kingdom. Tell me if I can do this. Oh, he's stunned, so I can walk away from him, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right, he's stunned. So I'm going to walk a little bit away. Sorry, I got to get his ass. And I'm going to beam him with my dagger. Throw All right, him. you back off. You take a moment. <sighs> You Eight hurl your four? dagger. Oh. Now Wait, the wolf is stunned, so you do That's hit. Uh... Okay, good. For damage of one plus something. Plus Watch something the bar. Watch well. the bar. Watch the bar. This wolf has lost about eight HP. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh. Okay. Eight. That's a easy. That's at least plus two. It's at least right two. There. Yeah. All right. All right. Big. Um, big. Uh, I'm gonna walk over and stab him after that, I guess, too. <laughs> well, no, I'll throw my other one. Fuck it. Uh, here's another throw. Twenty. Yeah. Four one. All right. Um, eraser will come on over, do a quick stabby stabby with the penalties for the wolf being unconscious or stunned. Was that eight and four is a 12, no decks. Yeah, I think that's gonna be enough to put the, the stunned wolf down. Wolf is just kind of like reeling and stumbling back and forth. Um, Sierra, does Sierra rally at the very, nope. Sierra does not rally at the very end. That wolf is oh, gone. We're gonna dream him, Nick. I grab a cloth and wipe the blood off my blade as I survey the battlefield and see Sierra quivering. <laughs> I look, I have a disappointed look on my face and I um, turn to look at Eraser and Pigeon. You hear Percival is still fighting. Oh shit. No way. up my shit. I go then. Bum, 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 bum. Excellent. Fine, attack him. That's now. fine, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. I might do a little, uh, little flank attack though. Yep, plus one for flanking. Little cheeky little, flank. Little cheeky flank, yeah. Oh, another critical oh. hit. <laughs> Maybe it's another 2d6 plus one. I can't believe it. It's too powerful for damage. It's but, not but, that. Now you're about to see its head come off. Okay. Yeah, it's a one for location. It's a leg. It's a big leg. The leg's coming off though now. No, it's not. No, no, it's not. 
Might All right. Well. Max. Um, the wolf will withdraw on its turn and back into the darkness. Um, and our combat comes to an end. What the hell's uh, wrong with you, Sierra? I put a hand on Percival's, like, he's, he's a bit fucked up, and I sort of, like, help him get on his feet and get, get us back to the camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eraser, did you see them? They didn't do anything. Everyone gathers round. Most of the party is wounded in some small amount. Only Helmet and Sierra are unwounded as everyone gathers and looks at Sierra. Did they piss their pants? No. They failed three. Okay, good. Right. They didn't piss their pants. Um, but everyone gathers round to look at one member of the Brotherhood who did not perform very well today. I, uh, breaking the awkward silence, I take a, a step forward. Is he, like, crouched down? Uh, no, he's standing against the his back to the walls, his sword's still out, um, just looking around in a bit of shock and awe. I, uh, I take a step towards him and I put, like, my right hand on, like, the top of his sword arm, and I'll say, um, it's, uh, it's it's a it's a lot out here for us just being in the city our whole lives. It's only natural that he'd be a little bit scared. And I sort of like put a hand on his shoulder. More I, safe, that's what matters. I I uh I uh He puts the sword down, just kinda like lets it fall from his hand and hit the ground. I um He looks at Eraser. Let's uh, let's have a drink. I go and like get in my bag to get a bottle of elven wine or something that I'm probably carrying with me <laughs> from our crates back at the lair. And I take a I take a swig of it and then I hand the bottle to uh, Sierra. Sierra takes a. You a, gotta a back sip. us up, man. That could have died. I um. I uh. It's, it's just that um and Sierra takes a sit I shake my head and I go sit on the other side yeah and give him some space I say to Pigeon as we're walking away you know, maybe he's scared of dogs I've seen it well we can't have people leaving us hanging yeah I know but if it happens again I'll show we'll you do my something. dog bites I know, yeah. They could have killed me. There was like three of them. Yeah, and that guy's over there pissing his pants. You know, he's not seen death like we have. I drink my expensive one gold per yeah. bottle of elven <laughs> wine. <laughs> one gold per bottle, mate. It's one gold per glass. Yeah, true. <laughs> All right. I sit under our parasol and our marquee <laughs> that we carry with us <laughs> on a reclining chair. The rest I of the night Bob passes. to make me a drink. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, morning comes. People get back on their horses and we head towards Meadstead. I'm just going to roll some mass encounter checks here to speed things along. Um, the, the horses didn't have any issues with the wolves. I checked them for nibbles. The DM forgot the horses existed because if the DM had remembered, the wolves would have attacked the horses and not the players. So they're fine. They're completely fine. Yeah. Um, That's good. Yeah. For some reason, the wolves didn't go after them and the horses didn't panic and try and run away. It was a, it's a Christmas miracle, everyone. <laughs> they yeah. just phased out of existence for a moment while the DM thought about wolves and wolf mechanics instead of horses. Uh, one, two, three... only three days to get there and now on one of these days i need everyone in the party as we're traveling uh to roll me a pers no everyone in the party roll me a d20 and then uh, do you want my 10 or do you want me to re-roll i want you to re-roll and then whoever rolls the 17. lowest needs to make a perception check well i think i, I have to roll for everyone else well. don't i yeah oh, we don't like hearing npcs with us it's so much work um, 40, 20. Yeah, six. Okay, so it's me. Nick, it's roll me a perception check. I've often been told that I've got eyes in the back of my head. Boom. 
21. All right, cool. Let's um, go. This was a gear test uh, on our encounter table, and I was ruling that something was going to be forgotten. One piece of gear had been left behind at camp and, and missed. But with your 21 on your perception check, you've noticed what was going to be left behind, and nothing is lost. Yes, I grab the marquee before we leave. Mm, yes. <laughs> Um, it doesn't take you too terribly long. Just three days to get to Mead's Dead, I think. Can we get three days HP or no? No, I, you're traveling over the open things. Yeah, no no HP for the travel time. Um, as you go through the Golden Sea, it's just big open grasslands for you know as far as you can see. And the other direction, you can see some woods off in the distance, but the one way is just flat. It's flat forever. It's flat like you're driving through Nebraska or Iowa. Eastern Colorado or Iowa or one of these, you know, just, could it really be this flat? Could it really be nothing <laughs> forever and ever and ever? And the answer I is yes. I can't even imagine it. Have you, you flew to Colorado. Did you look out the window while you were in the air? Yeah, it was night, it was nighttime. Oh, man. And Something to hold. Yeah. That's right. That was a snowstorm. <laughs> I almost died yeah. twice trying to pick you up from the airport. Yep. That's right. Oh, that was bad. Um, but days later, we find ourselves in the cozy little town of Meadstead. Little, friendly, cozy town. Except, uh, you know, cozy is maybe not the right word for it. Meadstead has had a hard time in these last few years. There was an army oh, yeah. of undead that came through and destroyed half the town and then circle encircled it for a while. Uh, there have been bandits, there have been robbers, there have been looters, there's been resettlers, and lots of chaos. It's not been a particularly stable place. So as you come through the outlying villages of Meadstead, you can see there's a bunch of places that are fallen into disrepair and are just collapsed, like just collapsed buildings, collapsed barns. And you see a lot of... Um, hastily and poorly made construction attempts all over the place, like windows that someone has just nailed boards on the outside of, because having your windows open to the air these days is just, it's not tenable anymore. Like it's better to have as dark houses um, than, than let someone in. As we're walking through the dilapidated houses, I like, I'm walking next to Percival, I'll say to him, by the gods, what happened here? And you sure your family's even still here? He nods. Yeah. Yeah. They're here already. Rich right. people always make it out somehow. What? Did the undead do this? Because I remember the, the undead. Living... They surrounded our city as well, didn't they? Yeah. The living did it. The dead did it. A couple of demons made it this far. The Drakissians did it. The Mystrians did it. Hell, there was Wait. even a, a group of dwarves that came out of the Hemdrakos Hills at one point, threatened to burn the place down, but they got paid off. Is this where Ebner retired? My cleric? From... Uh, what, what did we play with all the guys? Uh, um, Desperate Measures. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it we was retired here. in Meadstead. But you probably died fighting the undead, right? The villagers of Latrine um, loaded up into the hiring ships for the evacuation to Meadstead. Yeah, Chives tells Ebner and the rest of the party that he hired an extra boat to ferry across the livestock and invoking the name of the god Tempos in the process. This irks cleric right. of Tempos, Ebner, who casts light and shaves his eyes. Shaves his eyes? Chives is uh, the guy's name is Chives, and I just can't oh, pronounce Chives. Chives. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So, did, so there yeah. are some folks here from from Arid, uh, from Mistria. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Okay. So, like in the distance, do I see like an actual town? Like, do I see some like bigger <laughs> buildings? Are those their luck rolls? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, as you're coming through the village alongside the river, there's some trees here and there, and you walk through the first village, and it's kind of crappy and fallen. You get through the village, you start headed towards the town of Meadstead itself, and things here are also in pretty bad shape. But there's a, a couple of fortified buildings here um, with fresh, relatively fresh palisade walls around them. 
and a section of Meadstead, a large, most of the Meadstead now has a, a ditch, not quite a moat, but a ditch dug around it and all the earth piled up on the town side of things just to kind of make it a little bit more awkward That's what and I give just done. a little bit of a defensiveness. Mm -hmm. I would have dug a hole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dwarf Dwarf things. <laughs> Dwarf Hashtag things. Dwarf things. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so do we pass a, an inn or a tavern mm -hmm. on the way into Meadstead that oh, we yeah, can Oh yeah, there's a at? bunch. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we, like, you know, I'll say to Percival, like, let us know where we should stop. Um, Percival tells you that this first place to stop is the best place to stop. Um, and this is a tavern called, um, <clears throat> The Roebuck. Uh, called Odell's. Odell's Tavern in Meadstead. It's relatively new. It looks like it used to be a different building that was damaged and someone has fixed it up and slapped on a, a new sign. You can see the, the paint on the walls. Like there's this really grayish white paint that was probably the original building. And then where it's been fixed and repaired is this new kind of whiter paint that's on top of it. So you get the mm. like splotchy, we didn't have money to, to actually paint the whole thing the same one color. Um, and you can see inside the construction's different. Like the floor over here is like older stained brown wood and the floor over here is like newer soft wood. Um, yeah. It's kind of a cool. mess. Yeah. Huh. A lot of pubs are like that though. Built over the years, expanded. Mm -hmm. yep. Um. All right. We go in and get ourselves some, uh, the most expensive rooms. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The most expensive rooms are pretty cheap. Um. You can... I want to rent uh, the fact, whole floor can... out. Okay, yeah. Yeah? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Sure. Um, you can spend a paltry amount of money and rent out the entire inn. The innkeeper is more than happy this to do it. We, this, this is what we, we spend pay the for. money on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the I is yours. The, uh, the I don't want any pores. I go up to the bartender and I say, um, so what have you got to drink? Uh, well, we got some local beer. How's that for you? That's all shot. right. But uh, you got any stuff like down in the cellar, you know, the good stuff. Yeah, of course. we want your top shelf. We're rich. Well, I mean, <laughs> it is Meadstead after all. We got plenty of mead, but uh, ooh, it's a little bit pricey. Oh, that's fine. We can that's afford all right. it. <laughs> we'll take some meat. Yeah, you'll find us local meat. Of course. And you'll know head what? down. Meat and for the bar tonight. <laughs> we, we hide the whole bar, so. It, it's just the six of you, yeah. Um, he brings out a cask of mead places it on the table in front of you guys, brings you each a cup and just tells you, you know, as much as you want, I'll, I'll take care of it. All right. Um, I'm going to see how much I can drink them at a house and home. Oh. Well, so we, I it's really kitchen sweet. House, kitchen, house, <laughs> kitchen house and early night. <laughs> we start playing a drinking game. Um, you ever play like one of these games where, what did we used to call it? I can't remember, but anyway, you'd get a pack of cards. Can you slam all around? Yeah. Well, that's not what we called it, but every time someone got the king, you poured a bit of shit in the middle, yeah. Is Queen's that what you want to say? All right, yeah. okay. And then at the end, the person who got the last queen has to neck the whole thing. So I think that happens to Pigeon. He ends up having to like down like an entire pint of mead or something like that and just passes out. Yeah, I just Gross. go to bed. <clears throat> Do you call what? it Donut or Circle of Death or Ring of Fire? Ring of Fire. It's yes. funny that we all played the same game. We just all had different. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you have like different rules for all the different cards, right? So yeah. like, we used, that, you used to play like, um, if you got the ace, you could be like, we call it Captain Shithead, and you could basically just tell anyone to drink whenever you wanted. And exactly, also just yeah, like make up all too. the rules. So funny. Good times. Mm -hmm. But the bad thing with that game is there's always one person who never actually makes it on the night out because they drink they the middle drink and they have to go to sleep. <laughs> mm. yeah. That's Pigeon. That's Pigeon. Yeah, so I think the goal is that we, we've just done a long journey. We're celebrating tonight. And uh, we're going to hang here for a few days and Percival can go off tomorrow into Meadstead and do his thing. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to rent the whole place out for a few days. We just That's fucking party. It. <laughs> yeah. Like it's nine. We'll let the ladies in. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yeah, the ladies come in. Yeah, that's true. I think we do just us this night, but on the next day, Luther and... Is Percival a good looking one? No, it's Sierra, isn't it? Sierra. Mm -hmm. Luther and Sierra are going to go around the village and look for any, like, uh, young washerwomen and invite them to the bar that evening. Ah, yes. 
Yeah. Yes. Why don't you and Sierra both make me charisma checks? Absolutely, baby. Let's go. 28. That's what That's I'm talking about. What was Sierra's? What's his plus? 15? Uh, 23 for Sierra. Not bad. <sighs> Not bad at all. We've got foreign accents. We're from the big city. That's we've true. got we've got money. Free oh, meat. This, mm-hmm. this is a free meat. Yeah, no, not yeah. just beer. Mead. Yeah. This is the talk of the town. Well, yeah, this they've never seen shit like this in this village. You turn this sad sack of uh, a town called Meadstead into an actual sort of like enjoyable, lively little party. Um, it's the five of you and a bunch of the local girls that are here having oh, some yeah. drinks, having some card games. Someone even invites like um, the local, he's not quite a jester, but like the local funny guy out um, to join the party just because he's, he's just a fun guy, you know? He's the as sort long of as person. He's not too good, as long as he's not like too yeah. good looking. I mean, he's more funny than he is good looking, right? Okay, that's you know? fine, yeah. Um, yeah, it's like John Stewart, you know, not a handsome man, but just a funny, funny comedian. Sure, that's fine, yeah. man. Yeah. That doesn't threaten my that doesn't threaten my ego too much. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you guys are having yeah, so a great, we're a great time. time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm handing gold out to ladies and being like, if you if you want to get out of here, if you want to get out of this lifestyle, you, you just gotta make it to just gotta make it to where I live, and you can come live with me. Oh, but it's so far away. I know, but you could, you know, look at all this. And I'll hand her five gold. <laughs> I shall take the five gold and be like, well, how would I get there? Oh, well, you'd have to figure it out. You and your friends here. We, we live in Stromheim, you know, the big city. Oh, I heard that place is real dangerous. Oh, no, not where we live. We're in there. We're in like the inner part. Well, really? Oh, yeah. I don't, there's we're... an inner part of the city? Yeah, we're oh, inside geez. the walls. Yep. Wow. You must be a real noble then. Uh, I kind of shrug. Uh, has Sierra, has uh, Percival ever given me his last name? No. <laughs> he just goes by Percival. Oh, look, okay. you can make one up though, couldn't you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Pigeon John, Johnman. Pigeon Johnman? Oh yeah. Well, what are you doing out here, Johnman, talking to us little local ladies? I got tasked by my, my our new queen to go and check out the area. The queen in High Castle or the queen no, in, in Drekus? There's a queen in How many queens are there? I just I start lying, Neil. Yeah, I can get you. <laughs> you want to you wanted to use your new your new rules? Um, I think you, your story not, should be that you're a lookout right because of your eyes. Oh, like you've been no. said because you've got the best perception of anyone. <laughs> Yeah, exactly as my uncle's saying. I, I got the best eyes in the castle. He can see 300 degrees, this kid. Oh, yeah. Now, and if you ladies want to come live with us, feel free. Just make you it your be, own way. You better be careful when you're getting changed later. You better make sure he turns all the way around. <laughs> oh, I would never peek. <clears throat> I'm a gentleman. I'd take a drink and say, that being said, though, you know, the city is kind of dangerous. But, you know, we can look after ourselves. Would you roll me, whichever one of you wants to do this, a D6. I got you it. You roll it. You roll it. Four. Four oh, women pigeon. at once. Oh, Crazy. buddy. I don't know how you keep <laughs> doing this. You're selling this girl all sorts of promises, right? You're telling her all sorts of things. It's probably not one. It's probably like a couple of them. Um... And I know you got big eyes, but Pigeon, do they have big eyes for you? This is a hard life out here. You know, oh, yeah. we, we said oh, washerwomen. Shit. Washing clothes with a, you know, a, a washboard is actually really hard work. You're just rubbing your knuckles against wood all day long. It takes a lot of effort. It's thankless, hard work. And here they have some rich, fancy, handsome men with fine clothes from out of town, passing them drinks and everything. Pigeon. Against all odds, once again, you find yourself with a pair of women wrapped around your shoulders who are talking about, you know, I would love to come back to Stromheim with you. <laughs> Do you have oh, yeah, room? Baby. Because oh, yeah. I I mean, we c- I clean, house. I cook. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is great. 
We got 70 dwarves right now renovating their house. We're, we got a, we got a whole lair, baby. Huh? <laughs> they they drop their jaws, go slacks. 70 um, dwarves. It's not that's not even a lie, I don't think. We've got 70 <laughs> dwarves, 300 gnomes. Six yeah, elves. Yeah, you guys want to come back, do the cooking, the cleaning? Well, and, and yeah. Well, and I gotta ask will I be I able to wear clothes as fine as you? Oh yeah, my uh my uncle's got a whole wardrobe. I think he's got some lady clothes in there too. Oh wow, are there people to I... do the cleaning as well? If you've got 70 dwarves. I kind of frog. Wow, well, hold on. Uh, let me let me go talk to to my friend. Oh, I thought you were well, the yeah. the queen's, you know, oh, lookout. Here, here, get you guys some drinks and I'll put like a, <laughs> a, a silver on the table for each of them. So two silver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, there. These ladies want to come back with us. They do. Oh yeah, these two. I'll point to my table. Wait there, baby. I turn around from the girl I'm talking <laughs> to and look at the two girls that pigeons look talking to. Can we get some hotness checks, Neil? Absolutely. Now, this should be a True. forty-six drop one because I didn't just invite anyone. <laughs> oh, okay. You, we, we specifically invited well, no. the the most attractive well, women in town. I'm not saying that. that there's sense. just a little. There's there's a little bit of filtering. No, I, I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're. Yeah. We're not inviting. We're not inviting anyone with below average stats here. That's it. I'm not saying everyone's a ten, but there's, like, there's no fives. You roll one. I roll one. Now. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you each roll a forty sixty one? Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. They're they're, they're they're lovely ladies. They're lovely well, ladies. I look back at the gal I'm talking to. <clears throat> She's a fifteen. So, I uh, <laughs> I. Say to Pidge, I kind of shrug and say, "You're gonna have to ask a racer." And uh, I, uh, right. I turn back around to the girl I'm talking to. Yeah. I'll hobble over to a racer. Ah, uh, racer, these girls want to come back and live with us in our den. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a racer kicks back on a table with both of his feet up. Goes, "Oh man, really? Yeah, they they say they this hard life and they want to come do our cooking and cleaning." You know, Pigeon, the whole up. point of having money is to do what we want with it. It's to make life enjoyable and fun. Why not? <laughs> Fuck yeah, yeah. All right, but, boss. Yeah. I mean, right? This is the, you see, sweetie, this is why we're rich is because we know what to do with it. And the gods love it when people know what to do with their, when they, when you deal the cards that you've been dealt properly, he says like clearly drunk and fumbling his words. When your oh, cards yeah. are, when your, your hand is dealt right, like the gods just love it and they give you more money. So that's, that's why. That's why, well, I can't tell you our true name, not until we're on the road again, but that's why we oh, are yeah. who we are. We'll tell you our name when you come with us, and I'll go back to the ladies. Mm hmm. Jax will be praised. It's your lucky day, ladies. You're going to get out of here. We're going to be leaving in a few days, and you can come with us. Which one of us are you going to marry? They say, they're both staring directly in your eyes. How about both? <laughs> Well, moments. They take a ironically. moment and they say, okay. Uh, oh, wow. This is just going so swimmingly that Pigeon starts to think if there's magic foot. <laughs> this is, yeah, amazing. Is it, is it too good? It is. Is it a setup? Yeah. Nah. Nah. Think that a hard life. We're literally, we're yeah. flashing so much money here. It actually makes sense. I think about it for a second, like, eh, it's a little unbelievable. And then I call and, over more beer and we keep mm -hmm. going. Yeah. Last question about this night, Pigeon. You're a little bit deeper. These girls are very interested in this concept of coming to the, the city, okay. having to not have to work um, in this, you know, undead ridden, Hellhole. damaged town anymore. They don't know the state of Stromheim. They don't really know the state of your lives, but you're promising big city, like they're just trying to get out of the hell, right? Uh -huh. yeah. um, and they're interested. And as they hang out and they socialize, they bring up one more important question that they need to check because you can't just pick up your life at the first pretty boy who flashes some money your way. Like if you're literally trying to escape, you got to make sure where you're, where you're going to is a safe place. And so later that evening, one of them, while well, you're, you know, you're having a good time, we'll say, well, Pigeon, Pidgey buddy, you're... Surely a man like you already has a wife or a, a girl, Do, don't you? Oh, there is one girl. There was. Her name was Patricia. What happened to her? Is she dead? Uh, she died in childbirth, you know, right? 
sometimes people just, you know, you love them and they don't love you back. I say, with a tear rolling down my cheek. Mm. <laughs> That's so sad. Mm. Uh, convinced mm. that there is a beautiful life awaiting them with very little work, <laughs> fabulous clothing, no other girlfriends to be in the way. Um, the two local means dead ladies agree. I imagine to move back. a cut to nine months in the future, <laughs> right? We're in the living room. Luther comes down from the bedroom. There's like shit everywhere. There's like clothes on the floor. <laughs> These two women are like the kitchen's a mess. Mess. They're eating breakfast. And I'm just like, will you clean up after your fucking horse, pigeon? <laughs> This, no, these are these are all of ours. We're all together. <laughs> well, I don't remember fucking her. No, sorry, that was that was a step too far. Too far, Nick. That was too far. These are ladies who are gonna come live with us, and they're gonna be a part of our gang. Yeah, sure. No, I think for now I'm on board. They with might. It, but I think the, the reality of it. Way. Yeah, it's probably a, well. They they're also you'll probably get bored mm. of them, and then they'll be homeless and strong and <laughs> become destitute. So there is that as well. This is hardly heroes. Hardly heroes, right? Yeah, that's this is true. this yeah. is the campaign where you should feel um, encouraged to be. Have you ever seen the show Shameless? Yes. Well, the, the, the original it, yeah. was English, the, the original. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But same concept, was, where like you guys are, you know, down on your luck in a, a bad part of town from a bad upbringing, and it is, um, you know, it's not a glorious, yeah. glamorous lifestyle, and everyone is is it's fucked not. up and full of their own errors. If you want to. Right. This is the one campaign where you can be free to to go nuts, I think, because um, that's that's the characters. Yeah, that's right. Virtue's pretty low on our list of priorities. Yeah, we murdered someone in his sleep with two ladies in his bed. That's right. Yeah, you hey, it's good beat enough for a the grandfather to death while he was just trying to protect his family. Oh, true. No. Yeah, did, this is home invaders. Him, yeah. yeah, he was murdered. We we've, we've turned over a new leaf since then. We don't kill anymore. No, we're not killers. Except for Rock Boy, because he pissed yeah. off us. Except for the last session and the, and the session before that and the, and the session before that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm Pointer as well. Don't forget, we killed Pointer. Yeah. As well. Oh, yeah, you killed Pointer. Yeah. yeah. Well, we erased Pointer, actually. <laughs> we're murderers. That's <laughs> it's a dirty campaign. That is. All right. All right. We, so, uh, first night here. Hang out. Yeah. Oh, that's the first night. Wow. <laughs> um, now, I need <clears throat> someone to roll me a d20 for. Uh, Percival's how Percival's encounter goes go ahead Nick okay I'm gonna roll big for Percival here because he deserves some good luck my boy after that 20, heroic 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, after that 20, heroic 20, charge 20, 20. okay okay I'll take, I'll take a 13 it. I'll take a 13 okay mild success it's the next day you're waking up late in the day everyone's a little tired a little groggy little little hungover um the innkeeper is here bringing you some food you know you got some bacon and beans coming up for you in the in the morning breakfast with some eggs on the side a couple of sausages beans? it's a big meal yeah nice um and because it's about noon percival comes mm. striding on in it's, you know, oh, later. He's back already. Yeah, he's only been gone, you know, a day, 24 hours, maybe 30 hours total. I'm taking an HP. Oh, it's not yeah. after last night. Are you kidding me? Oh, true. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Percival, you're back soon. Do you guys make these sausages in the town? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Everything's locally right, made. Fresh every morning. Nice. <laughs> these girls are going to be in for a surprise when Pigeon is not... A, a lord. Mm. Yeah, I t I told the girl I was being to a realistic assessment of where we were. So I, you know, if she wants to come back, she can. But I feel like I've not I've not told her that we're lords or whatever. Yeah, that feels like a recipe for disaster. To be honest. <laughs> Who the hell's that? Um. Oh, no. Well, he's fucking loading. Who are these guys? We're gonna have to break them out. Still loaded. What if Percival's been pretending to be in the gang to get back home? Whoa. Wait, he did all of that just for an escort? <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty dumb. <laughs> Not the smartest plan, but still. <laughs> Listen, you can't argue with results. In walks Percival to the tavern. 
but he's not dressed like ordinary Percival. He's got oh, the no. fanciest duds you've ever seen on. He's got this long striped shirt that's sewn with little gold fibers here and there. He's got like a little half cloak. He's got a nice hat on. He's got fancy boots. Um, he's been groomed and oiled and properly manicured. He doesn't have that rough and tumble look that he normally does. Percival, Percival oh. looks like a, a young lord here I as he walks that. in. LDR is Percival's dressed in really fancy clothing. Yeah, he looks like a fancy pantsy boy now. <clears throat> He's all oiled up and manicured and, and dainty looking. As I say hello to him, what's his facial expression in the instant? Does he look ashamed? No, there's no shame. There's just sort of that... Um... <sighs> you ever visit your fa- parents and you come away from the visit being like, oh my god, I'm so tired. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, okay. I was like wondering if he was about to tell me that he's not coming back. No, he just looks exhausted from, you know, I, I love my family and I, you know, every sure, now and then, yeah. every, you know, family. Um, nice, uh, did you get nice this stuff, first of all? Nice get A couple of times. How was your sister? It's far <laughs> Ooh, away yeah. from you, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Thankfully for you, maybe. <laughs> Pigeon's had his hands full. Isn't that right? I yeah, say, I got two ladies the upstairs. They're coming with us. Oh, they're still upstairs. You tie them out, did you, Pigeon? They didn't fancy breakfast? Oh, no, they're sleeping. (laughs) That's what I'm talking about. I look back to the (sighs) allies, but he's clearly wide awake. Yep, she's awake. She's, uh, once you've turned to talk to Percival, she started eating your sausage. And, um, wouldn't be the first time today. (laughs) Uh, He looks around, you guys. Okay, I think, I think everything went pretty well. Good. But, um, you know, maybe we should hang out here for a couple more days. I I have to, actually. Oh, okay. Um, I'm supposed to act as my sister's escort. That was the deal. I can, I can take my, all the heraldry and everything we need. Um, but I gotta stay long enough to escort my sister at an event in, in two days' time. All good? All That's right. all good. Yeah, we can stay for two more days. Can you keep a low profile? Oh, yeah, of course. You know all right. <laughs> he looks around. He makes eye contact with the woman who's like chowing down on, on Luther's sausage. And he looks at her and he She's says, do you know who I am? In the middle of the bar. And she shakes her head and he goes, good. If you ever figure out who I am, you don't know me. And she nods her head um, and he will reach into a coin purse and just kind of like toss a handful of gold coins on the floor um, and oh. then head out. I picked them up and <laughs> hand them to her. That's rude. Sorry about him. I'll go to the bartender. Who is that guy? bartender oh was conveniently out of the room at the time he was going off to get some more baked beans I don't even like baked beans the bartender's name Heinz correct Neil Cannon he's selling baked beans he's Heinz 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 baked beans right uh sure sure thank you yes Uh, Heinz uh, Odell (laughs) <laughs> I think we party for two more days. Okay. It's, 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 I, Emric, I need you to roll me a d6 on our little table of things that can happen during your partying. Uh, well, I cast lightning bolts at any threats, so. Okay. Fuck, did I call you Emric again? You yep. did. D6, Neil? <sighs> yes, Nick. See, the problem is that Nick <laughs> and Imric are so True. similar. I get, in my, uh, a one, I get a, I get a one. I get a one. That means that's good. It means only one bad thing happens. It's not the worst thing that could happen, but it's that next night while you guys are keeping a low profile. It's a good night. That's maybe even better than the previous night. You know, everyone's a little bit, we're warmed up for the partying. You already know the company, so you don't have to do introductions again and everyone knows sort of what to expect. Uh, The mead is flowing. 
all the horses been sent out to like gather the extra fine goods from around the area. Someone got honey cakes. There's people showing up being like, did you order these muffins? And like, you definitely didn't order yeah. muffins. Like one of the girls must have ordered some muffins from like the next village over okay. and just said like, the guys will pay for it. Just bring them on down. So, and we do. <laughs> you know, money is being too. spent pretty liberally here. We're but up to the us. door, um, the door opens. Everyone's carrying on. Someone brought like a drummer and a, a, a violin player or something. <clears throat> and uh, the door opens and the sheriff of the town walks oh, in. Shit. Arming sword at his side, <clears throat> chainmail uh, vest on, you know, cloak fluttering behind him, pin on his lapel. And he looks look around around's. the place. Do I see a racer? Um... Yeah, the racer sees the sheriff too, sees you, hops up and I walks over well. with the short yeah. sword at his side towards the, the front door. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'll deal sheriff! with this baby. You say that to the racer? No, it's the guy I was Oh, with. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. and a racer make it to the door. And the racer's like, well, 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 sheriff, welcome. What can we do for the, the long arm of the law? Sheriff sort of. Scout, uh, scouts out the place and goes, I'm here to make sure that this ain't anything unusual. Anything uh, too on tawdry, if you know what I mean. Well, there is something unusual, Sheriff. We're giving out free drinks. And then I hand him a glass of meat. Hmm. Make a little quick corruption check for the Sheriff over here. <laughs> he uh, puts his hand up and says, no, it's all right. I'm on duty right now. Uh, well, I see a off. couple of well-armed men with a lot of money in town want to make sure that you're not skipping out on any bills a place like Meatstead Absol can't afford to deal with uh liars and cheats absolutely not sheriff right eraser where uh no nah, our money's good our gold is strong you know we've been on a long journey we've traveled a lot we're just getting some r and r in we'll be back south on the road in a day or two's time eraser nods and then he says, you know what, Sheriff? You're wondering if we were good for the money. Why don't you just hold on to this? And if we don't pay, you can give that to the bartender. It should clearly cover any costs we incur. He just hands over the Sheriff a, a pouch of gold. The sheriff opens it, looks into it, tightens it, gives him a nod and says, well, how do you do then? And uh, steps well. outside. Well Excellently done from a racer. Yeah, that's the high end's paying off right there. Oh, yeah. I go back to the table with the girl. All right. Second night, not a problem. <clears throat> Third night in town. Last night in town, Percival is off doing something. You know, he's probably off at this banquet that he's escorting mm -hmm. his sister to or whatever that's a euphemism for. You know, maybe he's got to, you know, make some pledges in front of some gods and he's just too ashamed to tell you or doesn't want to talk about it. But the third night, um, Pigeon, give me another D6. Four. Buddy, that's the same result you rolled the first time around. Okay, it's getting complicated. Oh no. It's getting complicated. Um, roll me a d six. Six. <laughs> it's Sierra this time. Sierra has fallen in love. Oh. Of oh, course. No, but he's like write, writing poetry and shit, this guy. He's a wannabe bard, isn't he? He's Sierra? a wannabe bard, isn't he? He's not just yeah. writing poetry, he's reciting it to the bar. Oh, no. uh, yeah. To the bar. Oh, <laughs> I mean, to the five, four of you, plus whoever you've invited here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which by this point is probably quite a big wait, group. Wait, we need a, a, a hotness check for his lady. That's true. Uh, yeah, Please. will you roll me um, 2d4 minus four? Minimum one. Two? Two. He's got two lovely new friends that he's brought along with him. Eight and no, Nick. She, was, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't have made it, though. No, she, she that's, made it. that's within the realm of average. Okay. Why not? Sarah. Right. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's within Where are you the coming realm back with, fine. like, four people? <laughs> yeah. Um, so he's reciting his poetry to these two girls, comparing them, you know, to the, the moon and the stars and how 
You know, growing up, all he ever saw were the, the tall city walls that blocked his view of the distant horizon. Now here are landmarks by which he can guide himself through life, just like the mountains and the cliffs of High Castle. So these women are the, the boundaries of his new existence. Um, and I don't know if they're actually eating it up, but they're at least presenting it like it is. That's what's going on. I imagine he could do a line right where he's, because he's never left the city before. Yeah. He's describing the wondrous beauty of nature. And then he can say, like, those mountains, the third most beautiful thing I've seen on this trip. In reference to the yeah, yeah. two women who were an eight and a ten. But, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't even seen a mountain because, you know, it's just only been yeah. hills. Yeah. Um, but he's laying on the charm pretty thick. And his pair of newfound friends, as we're calling them, just fall over themselves for, for this rich, beautiful, out-of-town gentleman. Any chance to escape Meadstead? Any chance? So, I think we're going to end up with with Pigeon and Sierra bringing back two companions apiece. Amazing. How many bedrooms are there in our house? Uh, there are six bedrooms. Each okay, person has the their own part, right? Yeah. In your at the bottom part. In the bottom part, we we haven't I haven't built out the map the women yet. Into, so. the, into the lair. Thanks no, we much. can't bring. We can't bring. I draw a fucking line at that pigeon. Wait, yeah, we can't bring them in there. That's only for Steel Team Six. They'll end up getting killed by the traps. They'll fall in the skeleton pit. Just yeah, literally have a boys club like a, a no girls allowed sign on the front yeah, of the yeah, door. No girls allowed. It's, for, yeah. it's, it's for their it's for their own safety. <laughs> Because if they leak the information, then it's like, mm. who did it? Because now if someone does it, we know mm. that it's one of us. Mm. Mm -hmm. Pigeon, I saw Amy sniffing around the door to the lair again. You make sure you tell her, <laughs> no girls allowed. That's what I mean. There's a sign for a reason. I don't know, guys. Maybe we shouldn't be bringing all these people back. It's too late for that now, isn't it? You made promises. I say as you've sobered up. What? It's not too late. We could just leave. <laughs> No, what about you, Sierra? Life. What are you thinking? This no, is the next day, I take up. it? Yeah. yeah. Pigeon's got some big-time post-not clarity on this one <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Pigeon's just thinking about the logistics behind it of like, oh, well, now we're bringing four people back. We can't even share the area with them. We're you having know, this, this conversation the... outside the tavern mm -hmm. and down the road, I can this see the is... two gals walking towards <laughs> us with the fucking suitcases. <laughs> this is the first time he's ever been out. He's like, do I want to settle down? Well, what about Patricia? You know, like there's a million things going through his mind. And last night, both of them reminded you that you promised to marry them in a church ceremony. Yeah. <sighs> now, Sierra, on the other hand, Sierra's, Sierra's been around the block a few times. Sierra is used to being um, the lady killer. And in the mm. morning, um, he needs to make some wisdom checks. Because maybe this is love. Maybe this one really is maybe love. Maybe love. My God, it's love, everyone. It's real <laughs> love this time. And it's not just one love, it's two loves. So, I think if Sierra's bringing his girl spot, you should bring yours, because fuck it at that point. Well, Sierra's line is, well, Pigeon, you know, four is too many. Why don't I just bring two? Don't you have Patricia back home after all? I bet she's going to be real friendly with you now that you've got, uh, you know, a little bit more money on your side. Well, yeah, but I don't want people to love me for my money. I don't know. I'm just, yeah. I mean, she took care of you when you were sick, right? And you didn't pay her a dime for that. I, I've been tipping her really well the past few months. Oh, she, don't worry. She's been paid well enough. I kind of... Eh. Mm. All right, but they're not allowed in the lair. Man, they don't know about what we do. That'll that'll jeopardize the business. It, they're coming here. They're, they're right here. <laughs> All right, well, tell, <laughs> tell them off, Pigeon. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go find... Uh, lemon and lime, Just... and I'll, I'll bring them back. Pigeon sees the ladies, they show up. What do they say? Yeah, um, they don't have much. They've got like a, um, a bed sheet that's been folded and like tied together that they can just carry over their shoulder with their, their precious few belongings. And they're looking at you with uh, relatively bright bloodshot eyes being like, okay, we're ready to go. 
<laughs> All right, one more thing. I go back inside the end. Uh, you know, me and my group, we uh, we share everything. Okay. You, do you know what that means? If you marry me, you marry them. Well, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> well, like, we have a blood oath that we will share everything. We share oh, our dear. money, we share our company. Do you share each you... other? Kind of drug. <clears throat> kind of. <laughs> yeah, in a way. <laughs> they make some morale checks. <clears throat> it's maybe not what they actually signed up for. Nope. And nope. Uh, I mean, I thought... Baby Pidgey, you said we were gonna be married. I thought marriage was a sacred thing between well, one yeah, man and as can, many women on. as he can you get can his hands come. on. Yeah, it's gonna be you two and all my 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 guys, all of us. I leer at them out the window. <laughs> um. I mean, if you don't want to come, I could just give you some gold, you know, as a parting gift. Um. This wasn't what you said a couple nights ago. Oh, it must have been the booze talking. I'm well, not even a lord. <laughs> you're not even a Hey, did you tell us anything that was true? I got 72 dwarves working on the house. <laughs> <laughs> One of the girls will aim a slap uh, at you. I dodge it. Whoops, there's a period uh, at the end of that. Hold on. I'll just be right back a second. Uh, yeah, you dodge it. You just step to the side. Whoosh. Um, and she turns and leaves. The other one stands there, kind of baffled for a moment, and says, Gold. I hold out a bag of... I give her a bag of silver. All right. She'll take it. I'll she doesn't it open it. Um, and then she will silver. take off, leaving you there in the streets, having dodged yet another bullet pigeon. I sigh. All right. Percival. I go inside open. and... Yeah. Uh, I make a, you know, I, I make sure that when Sierra's ladies get there, that I, you know, inform them like, oh, we got, we got two more ladies for the whole group. <laughs> like I'd say something in passing like that. And then he's going to have to deal with the aftermath of mm. oh, what does that mean? <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay. Let's Nick, while you're gone, uh, the ladies left. I informed the new ladies that Sierra has in passing, like, Oh, these are the new ladies for the entire group. And now he's going to have to explain to them, you know, what that exactly means. I don't. Yeah, I feel that's like weirdly threatening, though. You know, <laughs> hardly right. hear like that. Yeah. Well, what did you mean? What did you mean? it like? Well, you know, they got to be cool with the, everybody, you know, oh, yeah. We're, we're. Yeah, no, not in like a weird way. No. Wait, when you said we share everything, that's not what you meant. Uh, that's exactly what, you what meant. he meant. That's exactly what I meant. But everybody's got to be on board. Yeah, um, the conversation will continue. One of the girls will bounce, and the other girl, uh, she's ready to throw down with the whole group. <laughs> All right, see? Yep, nope. Uh, you know, she was doing whatever that's she needed to do to survive them. here in Meadstead, and mm -hmm. if that's what it's going to take to live in Stromheim, she's also hardly a hero. Like, let's, let's not pretend yeah. every washerwoman in town 100%. is a fucking saint here. Uh, th there that's are true. some sluts among the group, and she if she wants to slut it up in Stromheim, that's what she's gonna do. Oh, yeah. It's not. It's not uh, always about survival. Did. Sometimes it's just about fun. Luther has a nice time with the girl that he was with. He was a fifteen hotness, by the way. That he doesn't. He's, he, then he, he's talking about this on the way back. By the way, oh, about yeah. how hot she was. But we have a nice time. I don't invite you to come and live with me. Cause I'm not a fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. If we ever find our, if we ever find our way back to Meadstead, you know, I'm remembering her. You'll hit her up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we are equipping one additional woman to the party. What's her name? Um, she was either lemon or lime. No. She, she was lemon. Thing. Right. Okay. Well, Percival's in tow. Um, he, if anyone asks him what was going on, he just shakes his head. Um, doesn't want to talk about it. Maybe one day, maybe one, maybe another day after, after a lot of drinks, like a lot, a lot of drinks. <clears throat> well, let's get back on the road. Oh, and oh. he also takes one look around everyone. We can never come back here. You understand? Why? 
just understand I can never come back to Mead's dead. <clears throat> All we right. gotcha. We gotcha. Got it. Fuck Mead's dead. Does Lemon know who he is? Um, pretty quickly on the road, it'll become apparent that she knows who he is. Yeah. Mm. She'll, <clears throat> she'll give him at one point like a really fancy cur uh, curtsy and an over enthusiastic bow and he'll you know tell her off with very crass <laughs> language um, and she'll giggle about it and leave him alone um, and it becomes clear that you know he, he's not he's not part of his family anymore um, oh. and I think because we'll forget about this by the next session and the session after that and the session after that uh, at some point down the road your characters will talk with with Percival and he didn't escort his sister to a party um, he quickly married the one of the local nobles um, in order to get like all of his paperwork and everything and now he's just bouncing oh, on the wife and the oh marriage oh my god uh, that That's was the he is a <laughs> crazy man that was his agreement was marry the local noble woman stay here forever and then he just grabbed his supplies and left <laughs> with you all holy shit yeah, so that's why he can't come back because he's married and uh, he bounced on it. But he's um, got the shit, so it actually doesn't. There's no downside for us. For you guys, for it's fine. He got the paperwork. He got everything he Perfect. needs. He's got all of his uh, noble identity stuff with him. He can buy land. He can be the part. Um, yeah, his he, family's pissed though. Yeah, yeah, his family. Oh really wow, and is it? And is if his family like look into it? There's a chance that they're gonna know where he went. If they find out he went to Stromheim, you know, they might come after him. That's family, so they're not going to kill him, but yeah, it could 100%. be it could be an awkward yeah. situation. Huh, well, um, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So the party's going to head back to Stromheim. Now, we're out here. This is maybe the only... I don't know how many times we're actually going to leave the city. There's not much out here, as we've seen. It's a wasteland. There's undead. There's, you know... Yep. There's not much happening outside of Stromheim. Is there anything you want to do as long as we're outside? Um, you know, you could, you could in theory hit up Confluence on the way home. You could even, if you really wanted to, hit up High Castle. Um, but you know, those are different what, areas. What, I mean, we've got a lot of money, but what do we really want to buy that we can't get at home? You also don't have all your money with you. You can't possibly yeah. travel with it all. No. Um, I think that Pigeon would want to visit the Honey Rapids just to spend, you know, a night there, hanging out. Totally. Yeah, you got to oh, travel yeah, along the river anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, you know, he doesn't really care about any of these other okay. towns. Well, They're always touted as shitholes. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Great. Um, Nick, roll me 2d100. And Mooton, roll me 2d100. Okay. Low rolls. <laughs> um, everyone, roll me a d20 again. 11. Eight. Eight. Ooh, a four, I do believe, is a racer. Uh, passes perception check, doesn't lose anything. And the other thing we had rolled was a 43. We're on the road. It's not a great area. Whereabouts on the road are we? Uh, well, I guess road is metaphor here, but yeah, you are, I'm going to, you're over here-ish. Okay. okay. First of all, it's crazy. Why is it crazy? <clears throat> no, fucking well, no, I, he, no, I'm just saying like the move that he did was what a crazy move to just to do for your gang. <laughs> he went <laughs> yeah. and married a girl, got his papers and then dipped. Wow. He's got no interest in being a noble, though, so no. like, it doesn't really yeah. matter if his reputation's shot. No, just right. what an insane thing. You're on the road, the six of you and your horses, and the one, uh, the one lady on foot. Oh, look, is she not riding on Sierra's horse with him? Surely. She's no, not no, because like uh, horses do have carrying capacity, and even with the horses, you usually don't ride them all day. You ride them for sections, or you walk them for sections. You know, Sierra is not a gentleman. No, with her on the horse, this oh, is his okay. fucking all horse. Right. He paid for it. She can walk. 
<laughs> right? Oh. Wow. Let's well, he not. He's in love with this woman. He is in love with yeah. this woman, but like. She still needs to know her place. With Seer Sierra. is hardly a hero, right? He he quivers oh, yeah. in the face of danger, and then as soon as there's a woman that yeah. he's bringing along, he treats her like shit, oh, and man. and he's like, I I love you, but also I you know if you're gonna be he's with us, horse, you gotta baby. you also gotta <laughs> be with the whole gang. All you know, this is <clears throat> let's try not to idolize these characters too much. No, They're bad no, people at the end of the day. Bad you're guys, a bad, you're a bad guy, Sierra. Yeah, <laughs> said the murderer. <laughs> yeah. No one here is, is uh, someone we should look up to, but, and this is probably going to be what really tells us, you're coming past a village, you pass villages all the time, and you see there's a bit of a commotion going on. You're on your horses, you're kind of elevated up, some of you got chainmail on, it sparkles in the light, and you see coming from this village is a peasant, um, uh, a young man is running towards you, waving his hands back and forth as quickly as he can, trying to get your attention. Oh, that. Uh, yeah, I yell. What do you want? Help! Help! Please! Please! We haven't had a hero come by in ages. We need your help. Please. From what? There's onk eggs in the village. They got our cows. I'd laugh. <laughs> like a chicken egg? <laughs> Just the, the insects. Large cow eating insects. They burrow up out of the ground. You've got swords and horses. You must be some sort of fancy knights or, or adventurers of some kind, please. Afraid not, we're just merchants. Merchants with swords? That's better than what we've got. Yeah. Come on, Lucas. <laughs> yeah, wait, you can't go. Lord Marshall's too far away. He won't get here <laughs> in time. Shut up, you scumbag. <laughs> I'll throw this at you, and I show him my shiny dagger. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just take a second and acknowledge that we would get destroyed by a group of onkegs. Oh, yeah, 100%. Absolutely obliterated. So, you know, the unlucky guy. But. young peasant. I mean, there's not really a road, right? But he goes to stand in front of your horses. Anyone could easily ride past him. It's a symbolic gesture to be like, I'm not letting you go until you help us with this problem. There's six of you. We have a knight or a soldier in the whole village. They've all been, they're, they're all off in fortune right now. Please. I, uh. That sounds know. unfortunate for you. And I ride past him. Yeah, I knock him, I, you know, I'll, I'll make, I'll like go through him on the horse. You know, if the horse can knock him over, that'd be great. Go through him. I'm not gonna trample on him. I don't okay, know, what I don't does know, go through mean? Know. Then. Oh, I don't know much about horses. Can I, like, barge him without trampling him? It's essentially the same thing. Yeah. Okay, I won't trample. I'm not going to kill him. Okay, all right. You Let's try go and go around him. the guy. Yeah. When I don't try, I do. You're right. There right. is no try. You're right. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Um, he's going to make one more desperate morale check. He'll pass. Uh, he will throw a rock at one of you. Be at the me. fourth one of you, he's gonna throw a rock at helmet from behind as you guys ride past. Dinks off his helmet, no harm um, done. He criticals <laughs> helmet, you know, cause he's got that mask, but it's just tied with a strap at the uh, back end. Um, and so right he will do two damage to helmet. Great table. That's right, 1d10, 1d6 for severity. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a legend. If only he rolled six damage, it would have been insane. This guy's gonna die now, but... Yeah. Sorry, sorry, man. Gotta figure out my bonuses. Um, <laughs> it's actually a, an un, it's a bad blow to Helmet's head. He has a penalty of two to attacks until the... You know, it's it's like a... It's not a concussion, but it's a, a bleeding, nasty wound that leaves him a little bit dazed. He's got a I'll penalty of two to attacks Neil. until... He heals as if 2d6 damage. Give him a check to fall off his horse. Yep. That's true. He doesn't have horse. horseback riding. No. Yep. Um, let's just give him a good old fashion non proficient. Check. Yeah, yeah. 2d20. He's going off with that. Drop highest one plus. Here, what's your. It's wisdom minus three, I think, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Helmet's wisdom is 12. So six minus three. Um, natural Ooh. one. He falls Ooh. from his horse. 
taking some falling damage. He takes four damage. That's a total of six damage to helmet. I know that Pigeon's going to kill him, so I just wait. Pigeon, the boy is just staring at you. Come on, we need your help. I throw my magic throwing dagger at him. Do it. Do it, Pigeon. <laughs> he turns, oh! he natural 20. <laughs> if he doesn't die and he just turns and sprints away, I'll laugh so hard. So, do I get 44 for that? Yes. Uh, 11 HP. Plus, any Plus bonus. whatever. Yeah, it hits him square between the eyes, piercing his skull and his brain, and he falls down dead. Fuck yeah. I ride over, get off my horse. I check his pockets. Nothing. Pocket lint, a my... ball of string. You know. I take my dagger. Right. And oh, uh, I get back on my horse and go. Okay. Party Did heads back little, to Stromheim. A little look to the lady. He started yeah. that. No, I'm saying like just pitching, like when he gets back on his horse after just like one shot in the guy in the head. Oh, no, like, give, he doesn't look Give her a little wink. All. No, that's, no. no, he doesn't care. No. That all guy right. was just in his way. Just in his way. Unlucky back to so. Stromheim we go. Our party will arrive back in the city. It's been, what, it's four days each direction plus three days there. Um, so 11 eight, days. 11 days. Good times. We're hot. It was a bit of an adventure. By the time really we get was. back, it is going to be November. <laughs> I'll do it, Neil. Don't worry. No, no, you already paid it, paid for it at the beginning oh, of the good. session. Oh, perfect. Huge. All yeah. right. Well, that took some time. The dwarves are still working, though. Yeah, it's only been two weeks. There's a lot to happen before your lair is done. Um, but I do, before I, we end out for the day, want to set the scene. We're I arriving just back to the lair. I just check that the dwarves haven't taken any of our money. No, they haven't taken any of your money. Good. You get I'm back. not saying that I expected them to off. Just checking. The city that your place is in full reconstruction mode. Like, you know, there's earth being hauled out. There's a 70 dwarves working on this place. Your neighbors <laughs> are pissed, um, but no one's saying anything about it. Like, you can tell they're unhappy, but like... They know that there's some serious shit going on. Yeah, you don't stop 70 dwarves who are hauling earth out of a house night and day and expect to just, you know, you, you just, it's fine is what it is. It's just fine. Um, but it's going to be obvious that there's a lair being made under this house, right? Yeah, so this is the thing. If someone is just walking by, they're going to know that there's construction happening. Um, but if there's somebody who lives nearby yeah. and watches it all the time, they're going to see that there's just a lot of earth being pulled out and they're going to know that you're digging down. Now, granted, random passersbys won't know what, you know, understand, but the neighbors are going to understand that, like, they're digging. They're dig, dig, diggity digging here. I, I like the idea as well that because dwarves are well known to be good at digging and obviously they're not going to see all 70 of them at once. Mm -hmm. Like, there is a question of, like, how many dwarves are there are they just extremely extremely quick and there's only like 10 of them yeah because they'll be seeing like the pile of earth like what happens to the earth is it just being piled up on the streets outside or are they taking it away <sighs> no they pile it into carts and haul it into the abandoned or ruined territory mm. and they dump just it. and yeah they just dump it so that's you know these areas are just filled with piles of of crap uh, illegal dirt. dumping zones yeah uh, i need a wizard with disintegration in the future yeah now the are other thing to note here is that you arrive back and all this construction as we mentioned the neighbors know then the neighbors have gone to tell the the local landlord who owns everything here they're um, snitching and they they snitch they they someone in the neighborhood has snitched to the local lord and so as you're pulling up there is a dwarf the same dwarf that you met in the, the basement. What was his name? Sparky. Sparky? Sparky, yeah. Spade. Sparky, the, poison, Sparky Spade. the poison dwarf. Oh, no, no, no. Right. this is Spade, the, the foreman of this group. And he's standing with his arms crossed in front of your house, looking up at this noble who is talking down to him, wagging his finger and being like, who told you you could do this? This is my property. You can't. Don't we gotta even buy this place, Percival. Right. And that's when the six of you, seven of you now ride up. 
and the Lord turns and he sees the eraser and he puts down his finger and he starts walking towards the racer on the horse and says, you, this was not part of our agreement. What do you have to say for yourself? This is ridiculous. We, you can't get away with this. Show me the plans. And there's fees. Who authorized this work? Come on. Guards? Someone speak up. He's got a pair of, uh, actually, he's got six guards with him. They don't have armor oh, on, but they okay. do have weapons at their sides. Got it. I was going to give him some sassy language, but seeing the six gods, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Eraser hops off the horse and says, mm, Lord Caster, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I plan to be a surprise. I've just gotten and uh, <clears throat> my fine noble friend over here on the horse would like to buy this house from you. And Lord Castor looks over at the fine man on the horse who's now changed back into his uh you know vest yeah. with his mohawk 100%. and the open shirt and looks at him and goes that's not a noble. Percival hops off his horse, undoes a pack, starts pulling out some documents. Um and Eraser and Percival step off with the lord and you know four of the guards come with them. Two of the guards keep an eye on the mm -hmm. rest of you. Can I lip read? Okay. Yes. Uh, 25. Oh, it's fucking killer. Who? Um, pick two. You can position yourself to get the faces of two people. Which two do you want to lip read? I'll ask, uh, uh, Nick as well. Oh, who should I, who should I read? I think Percival definitely. and the... Yeah, definitely the noble and probably Percival. All right, Percival and the noble. <clears throat> okay. You think I should make another check for like if I'm seeing two and I'm lip reading two, could I make another or no? I think you should make two, yeah. Okay. So that first one will be for Percival. Yeah. Oh. So you're not gonna be able to read out the nobles' lips. They're not here long enough for you to really get a, a yeah. good reposition. Assuming um, it's not possible to eavesdrop. No, I think there's too much. Well, maybe it'd have to be really good because there's still dwarves hauling earth and construction going on. I don't think that's going to be good enough in this situation. Not with the, the mm -hmm. added noise of the, the hustle and bustle of the city. You can see Percival um, pull out his document. He says something to the effect of like, here's my pedigree. This is my family lineage. And the local noble goes and like snatches the paper. His face turns a few times. And he nods. He like goes through the scroll and unrolling it from the top and rolling it on the bottom and he reads everything and kind of rolls it back up and hands it over and Percival brings out a signet ring um, and a bit of soft wax that you'd use for like writing and, and he presses the signet ring into the soft wax and like shows him the, the sign and symbol. And Lord nods a couple of times and says, well, it's still... Well, actually, you can't hear what the Lord says. Yeah. He complains. Eraser says some things. Percival says some things. Eraser says some more. The Lord looks kind of surprised. And Percival nods and says, we can pay it. Why don't you bring your men back around two weeks time? We'll start to arrange payment. And the local Lord, Lord uh, Castor nods a couple times, gets back with his men and they leave quietly. And soon I Eraser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ride up to them and jump off the horse and say, so what happened? Well, we convinced him to sell as we intended. Great How job. Are we paying? Yeah. 10 grand. Oh, you've All got right. an eye for detail, Larissa. I've got an appraisal proficiency. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, 10 grand. Let's see, what does that do to the old budget? Uh, well, we'll have to find out and you can head inside where the construction noises are louder than ever. Um, find Dwarves a... are screaming. Mm-hmm. Lots of cursing in Dwarven happen. You can tell it's cursing. Um, and you can sort through your finances. What do you got? Yeah, Wait, so... 17 gems worth 500 gold. I think we should keep some of the gems. It's better than the... Like, we should... I reckon we use 10 gems. Okay. To get the first 5,000. Do they want payments up front of everything, Neil? Um... The dwarves are who? What? Cat Lord Caster. 
Lord Caster wants the ten grand up front um, in the in a week, week's time. Okay. So ten topaz gems. How much is iron worth? Two. Two to one silver. Yeah. Two to one silver. <clears throat> wait, wait. Um, iron's worth twenty-five copper. So two. Uh, yeah. Okay. So fuck that. A up. quarter of a gold. And platinum's worth how much? Two. 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 But it might uh, be worth more or less depending on the area. It's worth yeah. For here, it's worth yeah. two. That's 7,400 gold there. We got 12 amber gems worth 100 gold. How did you get 7,400? Uh, 5,000 oh, plus 2,400. You're using the platinum. Maybe we should keep yeah. all the platinum. Okay, we can keep all the platinum. So I say we do, yeah, so we got 5,000 from gems. Let's do 3,000 gold. Okay. Now we need 2,000 more. We can do... Two thousand more. Wait, how do you have five thousand from gems? Uh, ten topaz gems. I just took ten off. Oh, okay. I assume we're got it. Now. I took ten off. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And then we done three thousand gold, so we need two thousand okay. left. You don't want to just pay with all the topaz? I don't know. I feel like it's nice to have some gems. Okay. <sighs> let's let's do another two should, gems. Yeah, let's do another two and even five. All right, that's an extra thousand gold. So now we're then, at. No, so now we need an... one more thousand gold. Two thousand silver. Or two thousand th silver doesn't come out. Two thousand silver is only two hundred gold. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. How much iron? How much is the the iron is almost worth a thousand gold? Yeah. The iron would be yeah. Like, each one is two and a half. So the yeah. iron is four thousand eight hundred. Uh, the iron, so that's six hundred gold. The iron. Okay. And then Got another four hundred, and then do another four hundred gold. So that leads us down to nine hundred and thirty-four gold. Okay. All right. All right. So you've paid. already you've taken off the gems. Yes. Yeah. I took ten. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay. Right, now twelve. Right. It was just the the twelve topaz, all the iron, and a bunch of gold. Yep. And that covered everything. Yep. You know, we didn't even. This whole landlord thing wasn't even going to come up. We've literally just talked ourselves out of ten grand there. Yeah. 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 We did. Yep. You think but so? But now. We yeah. actually owe it. Oh, own it. We own it. We're on the props ladder. When the props prices go up. Yeah. So do we own like a, is it one singular house that we own or do we own like a little plot? We own up and down, right? Because he's and complaining down and the backyard. Us, so he's complaining have about us. <laughs> or no. No, I we meant that we, no? I meant that okay. we own the land below us as well, right? Yep. 100%. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. You have property, you have mineral rights, mm. um, Water rights. You have the land. You have the sky above you. Um, you have the walls, the paint, everything on the inside. You do not own the people to your left or right. Um, but someone here complained to the local lord, or he just came by to collect rent, or made an inspection, mm. or who knows what. Um, All right, but well, we're in um, it now. Lots of money spent into this place. Technically, Percival's family owns it, right? That's well, true. Personal Technically, owns Percival it, right? owns it. He's going to get appropriate documents. It's going to be in his name. It's going to be in Lord Percival, whatever his last name is that he still hasn't mentioned to you yet. Although, if you wanted to, you could ask the lady that you've brought with you. I would have asked her at some point on the trip. Okay, we're going to go to the save or die NPC names. Anyone who has submitted a name? Ooh, I think we've used all of these. No one submitted a name in a long time. No, I need to remind them, yeah. That's right, a good go. on that. All right. Then we're going to pull okay. a name off of this nearby can on my desk. His name is Percival Parkway. I think you're going to say like Percival Coke. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Percival <laughs> Pepsi. That's Percival Parkway. Parkway. Mm -hmm. The Parkway okay. family of Meadstead. Yeah, but don't ever call him that, right? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Cool. Should we call it there? We should call it here. But this yeah. is not the only part adventure in building the slayer. 
we have other things that are going to come up. At some point, as the lair gets built, you're going to need to go capture some slimes or oozes. You're going to need right. to go skeletons. capture some skeletons. And inevitably, with your increased visibility and your increased uh, man about town status, you're going to make enemies because you're no longer this quiet, sneaky, flying under the radar group of little brigands. Mm. You are real players in the game. You guys are That's someone right. worth knowing, someone worth being afraid of, and someone worth robbing. So we're That's gonna right. play it out and we're gonna find out what happens next time on Hardly Heroes. Thanks for watching. <laughs>